You're welcome to We're Just a Message of Podcast. Of course, I'm Mike. I got my dog Drew Money on the boards. I, 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 how y'all feeling? I'm feeling great, feeling great. Got a special guest, friend of the show, Jordan, back in the building. What's up, y'all? How you doing, my nigga? Cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. Uh, so last time you was here, man, uh, you know, you had another uh, podcast as you was doing, but you done transitioned to a new podcast, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let the people know about your new your new shit, man. Yeah, which I've been up. enjoying. Yeah, you, 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 I've been fan, enjoying, man. Fan, I respect yeah. it, you know, mutual uh, mutual fanship here going on. But uh, I got a PSBS on YouTube, Parlay Sports and Bullshit. Uh, I touch on gambling, other sports topics, um, whatever's going on in the news. I try to record like every three days. I might do some later tonight. Okay, that's tomorrow. what's up. That's what's up. Because uh, it felt like when I was doing OTH. Um, <laughs> With Flea and uh, Celi, it felt like every time we would record, the next day some some shit would pop off, and it'd be like, man, you know what I'm saying? You got to find a good space because you could record next time; it'd be too old, you know. So yeah, I try to do every three days, but yeah, PSBS on YouTube. Subscribe, share, give me feedback. I'm not too, you know. I don't think I'm perfect. I like to listen to all opinions or whatever. So, yeah, what the, the the only the only thing that's new to me is the whole parlay thing. You know, we talked about that somewhere yeah, on yeah. the show. So. How do y'all really gauge that shit, man? It's because uh, to me, it's just it's basically just chance. It's, it's mean, betting on chances of yeah, shit happening. On chances, but um, it's, you gotta be a strategist. I mean, you gotta be. It's like luck. You know, they say luck is a uh, when preparation uh, preparation meets opportunity. Like for instance, yesterday, I put a I put a bet on Embiid, and then like two minutes later, or Tyrese Maxey actually, and then like two minutes later, it comes out the heart and gets injured. Mm. I knew he was doubtful, so I took the over on one of his lines because I figured he'd get more usage. He blew it out the water. But, I mean, it's I said this in one of my episodes. It's hard to not make any money gambling because you can type in hashtag whatever app, and you got people who make models. You got, um, I mean, it's a science. It's people who, I got a, I got a friend who works with a data, he, he's friends with a data analyst mm. that creates, like, lines and, and all that stuff for, for actual gambling sites. So, yeah, I mean... You could say it's, it's just betting on chances, but there's more to it. James mm-hmm. Harden free throw line might be six free throws made. He going up against, I'm just say Indiana, who's like fourth in the league in fouls. He's gonna get to the line. You know what I'm saying? So it's chances, but you depending on the site you use, you could also see the patterns they've been they've been playing lately. Um, and just just smarts. You know, I put I mentioned uh, Steph Curry yesterday. He had a line of like 28. And I have points. I told somebody, it was like, man, they coming off a of back to back. And I'm like, man, but they, they the seven <laughs> yeah. seed. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to. And that, he How that back to back shit be? Because I know that shit could be tricky. It, it's iffy sometimes. Sometimes they, they like shit the bad. But other times, right now, you got people trying to avoid play ins and XYZ. So, I mean, yeah. it's just you, you betting on somebody's will sometimes. And that and that's the, the fun part. Not fun if you lose them, but. It gives a perspective about players. That's why certain players, you might say, oh, Embiid is this or Jokic is this. And somebody is doubting them based off of how they sold on their parlay. Mm-hmm. And they may be right. The other night I watched Spencer Dinwiddie in a close game in the fourth quarter. I needed him to get two more points. And his stat line stayed the same for seven minutes. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think my opinion is going to be if somebody tries to say Spencer Dinwiddie is this or that? You know what I'm saying? He's not going to be the best. Like, you be thinking they be knowing what, like the lines and shit? Did you see what happened with Corpus Crispy in Texas A and M in in March Madness? That that uh the, at the end of the game when he shot the he, three, he he had to they was up spread. by twenty six. The spread was like twenty three and a half, and then he shot it so it, it made It'd it be like twenty four. He had to know they 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 definitely know. There's so basically, be, it chopped it down to like nineteen or twenty or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there's gonna be a controversy soon because I said this before. John Collins of the Atlanta Hawks is a prize picks investor. His teammate is Clint Capella, the one of the most reputable salesmen in the NBA. Clint Capella is gonna sell on your bet. And his teammate is an investor in this app. Damn, that's crazy, the bro. The Phoenix Suns are getting my boy Cal, I think he sent me something the other day about the Phoenix Suns getting a FanDuel Sportsbook set up in the arena. You think you you don't come on, man. They 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 getting they they tap it too close to it's getting home. iffy. It's getting iffy. Yeah, it's getting because I'm thinking that dog, you might as well just this is reminding me of some Arizona State 1994 type shit. You see what I'm saying? I, like, I mean, y'all are allowing certain brands and certain entities to just, mm-hmm. okay, like we're in the roulette 
business relationship yeah. with it. Now, I'm not saying nothing wrong with it. I think it can it's be, cool, it know? can be cool, but y'all can't have no type of meetings, discussions right, about what the fuck right. is going on, dog. Of interest, it's a conflict of interest. And yeah. then you, like you said, do you think they know the, the spreads and the lines or whatever? Like, it's sometimes where I bet on the Dolphins at one point where, like, Jeff Wilson the past year, he had like six carries. I mean, he'd average like five yards up until Mike McDaniel stopped running him, but they were playing like one of the worst rush, uh, rush defenses in the league. You can't tell me. Like it's just it's just certain stuff that don't make no kind of sense. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, it's cool. I made money. I lost money. But I'm I'm not one of them. Nobody in the suburbans ever coming to my house. I'm never going to tell my wife like, oh yeah, we can't pay this because I nah. I, I do. A lot of people I'm are like, fucking up. They, they fucking people, up their rent money. There's some people that uh man, you you look if like I said if you type in hashtag whatever at Prize Picks underdog um even Bovada whatever you'll see people. Betting all or nothing, they putting up five hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? I seen one dude one time. He said, "This is." He said, "I'm down to my uh my light bill money. This all or nothing." God, like I, and he flipped it. He won ten times. It was like one thirty. He won thirteen hundred or whatever. But it's like people get to that point. So light bill know, money is crazy. You got to know when to pace yourself. I mean, there there have been nights I looked at a board and and bead is going up against Valentunas barbecue mm-hmm. chicken, but I won't bet just to discipline myself. And, and okay, that, okay, okay, okay. Times I, last night I canceled the ticket that I would have won one fifty off of just cause just just to limit myself. I don't need it that bad. So it's all about discipline. It's fun. It's cool. But um, where yeah. where is the temptation start as far as your body? Like you know, like I got to. T- does it start in the stomach or does it start in the head? It's oh, you know, it's definitely in the head. Like it's it's a uh, <laughs> see me and that's the thing with me too. Like my sleep patterns are horrible. Just from work and like I, my body never reset from high school. Like I still wake up like I'm like I'm a 15 year old at West Asia High. 13 <laughs> years later, okay, my body okay. Never, I still wake up early in the morning. So uh, the advantage for me sometimes is, for instance, yesterday, uh, or it was two days ago. In B, I mean, uh, not in B, but uh, Jokic had a line of like 21 and a half points mm-hmm. at 3 a.m. in the morning. I had to wake up get some water. I, I made a bet, which sounded like some real betting junkie type shit. And then two hours later, when I started really getting ready for work, his line is at 23 and a half. Mm. He scored 26 that game. So everybody wins. But there's definitely games where somebody scores that 24th point, that 22nd point in garbage time or or late foul free throw. You know what I'm saying? What's, what's more stressful, basketball or football? Pro. I would say football just because um, – I mean, you'll – if somebody sells in baseball or basketball, they don't they don't get their points or whatever. They're having a bad shooting night, but they took those twenty attempts. You know what I'm saying? Okay. They did it. You'll bet on Devonte Adams to get over ninety five pa- uh, receiving yards, and Derek Carr throw him four times. That ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. You bet on a on a on a Belichick running back. Damian Harris, he might have got 16 carries this game. Ramondre Stevenson might have got nine. But the next game, it'll be flipped. There's so many. So, football is definitely more stressful. Um, I, I I got PTSD from this past. <laughs> and then and then there's no there's no late. Like, I've won money because of Dame at garbage. Not garbage time, but they up by three other teams fouling. Got to get them to the line. Get them to the line. Yeah, and yeah, he'll yeah. he'll clinch in the last 15 seconds. If you under on a winning team's receiver, and they just got to run the ball out and kneel it out, you just you watching the game for the last two minutes, knowing like it could be third and forty seven, they just gonna run the ball just to and kneel it or or, or punt it and let you, you know what I'm saying? To whereas basketball, they're still it's still close a lot of the times. And, well, what and, was your what was your worst day? What was your best day? Best day? Um, I mean. I, Trust me, I be seeing the temperature on the yeah, timeline, bro. Like, niggas, niggas be saying every other day, "I'm done betting." Yeah, yeah <laughs> get no, right back to lying, that shit. Lying. I've lost like, uh, <laughs> I lost like one fifty, um, two hundred. But but when I do bet big like that, it's off of a crazy bonus check at work, some shit like that. Okay, like, okay. Because okay. that's one thing that like I joke about, but I, it sets me it sets me apart from different. Bet. Like I I make good money at work. You know what I'm saying? There's people yeah. who don't, and they turn to betting to to compensate. To compensate, like, nah, I can that. Man, I, I sold a car yesterday. It's gonna pay me what my best day paid me, which is like two grand. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it it's fun because you realize like how far you willing to go. I I made like total like two grand last summer off of Korean baseball. 
I remember you that's and Mez so, was talking about that Korean baseball it, shit. <laughs> Mez be doing Australian basketball. Like, it's so many different ways, and it, and it it makes you a fan of the game. That shit do see well shirts. Sure. You know, is, is this something that you see yourself doing full time? Nah, I'd have to. I'd have to really smack some shit. Like, I'd have to go. That's how I feel. And go on Bavada and make. I still have never done 20, it. 50 grand. You, you a disciplined dude, though. You know what I'm saying? You might be able to. <laughs> yeah. You know, you might be able to. I can walk away. Be cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, and especially depending on how you live your life. Like, if you win, if you win $120 off a bet. And you straight find that that might just be fun money. It's fun you know what I'm money, saying? yeah. You got niece and I've won I've won five hundred dollars in a day and sent it to my sister to, to get a prom get her prom fit. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like shit like that. It don't you know, I'll tuck some away for, you know, give it to my wife or whatever it is. But nah, I could I couldn't go full time. My luck just ain't that great. That's how I feel, bro. You're gonna have a lot of lost days, bro, oh, yeah. for you to do that shit full time. But oh, yeah. you these people who be in like groups who be, and they be having like, oh, like automatic picks and da 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 da. Mm-hmm. I be feeling like that shit is kind of like the stock market in the sense, like, bro, yeah. you really just predicting, but you never will know, bro. You won't know. You won't know. And it's, it's- especially with especially with uh with betting, because it's like yeah. here's my question, right? Because uh People even be betting on wrestling, right? People, they're trying to they're trying to make that a thing now. Which okay, but here's my thing, right? Because and I don't knock nobody who watches wrestling, yeah. but when I found out that wrestling was scripted, it took away. From I it. I didn't look at it the same way I did as basketball and football. Right, right. So when I was growing up, watch wrestling, all the championship matches and matches, I thought that shit was like how football and basketball yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. So when I found out it was a script, it was like ah, uh, it's like okay. Yeah, was, I, I can't look at it the same. Right, right. So why would you bet on something that's purely something entertainment? Like that? I don't, I don't get it all. I don't get it at all. Like but you betting on Roman Reigns to win it, but it's yeah, scripted it's, though. <laughs> it's scripted. Yeah, it's it's some it's some bullshit. But I, I stick to my uh, baseball. I, I really love baseball though, because baseball um, they got live bets. You can bet inning by inning. You can bet with the, what you call a nerfy, which is a uh, no first run innings allowed. So if, if yeah. you score zero zero at the end of the first inning. You're not sweating for the whole game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said yeah. this before. When you bet, you learn a lot of a lot of what ifs and history of fake. Mm-hmm. That Kobe plays six or scores sixty in three quarters. He probably would have ended that game with sixty eight. I've okay. seen. I've seen against the Mavericks. Yeah, I remember that. You know what I'm saying I I, that. the other day, uh, Dame man, I almost man, I wanted to create a burner account to slander that man. <laughs> Dame. <laughs> Dame started like nine of like no, it was like seven to uh, twelve in the first half or whatever. He ended with like nine of twenty one. He was one rebound short from a total, which is another thing. You got combo props. You can bet a, a PRA, which is will and B get a combined points, rebounds, assist total of, of forty seven and a half. And you you be like, man, he, certain dudes is so automatic. Dame has had some of like forty. You're like man, he'll drop forty points alone. You know what I'm saying? You got some rebound assist guys. It's, it's all like I said. You got to watch the game to know some of it because, uh, like Draymond, I never bet on Draymond Draymond points, but if he got a rebound and assist, rebound combo, and assist combos, thirteen take and that. a half. Hell yeah, I'll take that. And it's big, that's a it. combined combined. So he can get okay. twelve rebounds, two assists, and get two assists. Just as long as he get the thirteen yeah, total, as long as he get it. So, oh, um, but yeah, it's, it's fun. It's something I, I, I think over the last year or so, I would say. Uh, I seen it amplified for Mez. Oh, yeah. Mez definitely be having his days where, yeah, like, yeah. bro, this motherfucker sold me. Yeah. This nigga did this. <laughs> oh, definitely. Me too. And, and it's uh, me and Mez in, the, in a group. Where okay, we, you know, okay. We share, share, uh, certain shit. But it's, uh, like I said, you got to pay yourself. You got to have discipline. Yesterday, I I uh, I bet like $7 on a Nerf. You won like $21. Like, that's cool with me. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. I, I flipped that bet 21 on a five pick flex to win anywhere from. Eight dollars back if I get three out of five legs right. I could double it if I get four out of five right. Or oh, I could win ten times. So yeah, I'm never. I'm not one of them kind of put fifty on a prop yeah. all or nothing. Like it have to be. It have to be automatic. But like I said, from an actual fan standpoint, there are people who don't watch these sports. Like I love football. I love uh, basketball. Baseball was a sport I loved as a kid growing up in New York in the beginning. Sammy Sosa is my first favorite athlete. I kind of fell off with baseball. Like, it got too boring. But now with betting, I can appreciate it. I could watch a game where yeah. I'm not betting on anybody in, you know? So, uh, Bro, listen, I know this girl, girl I'm cool with, she was stressed as hell one weekend. Matter of fact, it was the weekend Baltimore 
had lost to Miami when they put up them crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She I won like she won seven grand that day. But here's the thing: she's not a real big sports person. Mm-hmm. She bets off of trends and shit. Yeah, yeah. So she'll text me on Sundays, tripping and shit like that. She'll be like, "You think y'all y'all gonna win?" Yeah. I'd be like, "No, don't bet on us today." There'd be some weeks she might go against me, and some weeks she'll listen to me. Right. But like one week I said no, and we ended up winning. Yeah. So it's just like. A lot of people who really don't be into that sport. I've seen some yeah. women really, like, really get into it. And they really don't, like, know, like, really the yeah. ins and outs of the players. They but they just, the they bet based off of the trends and yep. shit like that. So it's like, it's it's, it's wild to see. But, shit, man. Yeah, but for me, I kind of just leave that alone, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah I'll yeah. leave it alone. But like I said, if, if you are somebody who loves that sport, betting can give you more knowledge or more, like. Do you think the analytics play into betting? Well, you think that's completely separate? Like analytic, analytics of uh, like how teams want to construct or organizations want to construct teams based off of analytics or what shooting. Yeah, and stuff yeah, like. yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Because. Do you factor that into when you make bets? The analytics? I mean, stats, but not. Yeah, I'm talking about the stats. advanced, like yeah, the advanced not, stats not the, and not all the that. Not the advanced like that. Um, I, the most advanced, like I said, if, I, if there's a free throw line prop, I'll consider who fouls the most. Um who takes the most attempts, like certain stuff like that. Um, okay. I, I have, look, one of my favorite props is fantasy points because this points and this combined, like rebounds is counts for 1.5 or 1.2 points. Assists is 1.5. Uh, turnovers the only way to lose points. Steals and blocks count for three points each. Mm, okay. That's good for a Herb Jones, for a Marcus Smart, a Draymond, a uh, uh, Tyrese Halliburton. These are low turnover um, – Defensive players who'll get a steal, who'll get a block. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'll consider stuff like that. But, nah, not too much in the analytics. Not too much in that. I feel you on that. I feel you on that. And if it, if it looks too complicated, if I'll just, I'll just stay away from it. I don't care how many people saying bet this or bet that. If it's a the, the Knicks and the, and the uh, what you call it, the Nuggets play yesterday. Jokic uh-huh. been selling. Julius Randle is like a band, bandless all-star. Like, I'm going to stay away from that. You know what I'm saying? I might bet on turnovers. Yo, the... Like we go to probably talk about this a little bit later. I just I gotta yeah, say this about this. this Julius Randle 13 threes a game shit. Ridiculous. This shit is crazy. And he's shooting them with so much confidence. Yeah. But it's like I'm waiting for him to really get to the consistency aspect. Like yeah. if Julius Randle's shooting 13 threes a game, my nigga, you better be 40%. You gotta be 40%. You gotta be you gotta 40%. Be. Nothing yeah. I can't accept. I can't accept high. I can't even accept 38, 39. No, yeah, like you gotta be that. Because you a different type of player, bro. You a Power forward, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where like Shaq, get to the line, nigga. That's where like Shaq and Chuck and them got a point. Like, bro, you can't be, you can't be doing that. And like, all right, so he he's shooting eight threes a game right now. That's ridiculous. What's his percentage? Not, what's that? 30, 34? Yeah, that's not. That's like, a, yeah, 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 no, 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 no. I mean, before he got hurt, Lamelo was shooting ten a game, and he was low thirty. <laughs> he got to get at least about thirty five. Yeah, if you ain't if you ain't Dame, Steph, um, Clay, like it's it's few guys. That I, I'd accept that from even Anthony Edwards, um, Zach. SGA is a, is a he's a Larry Bird low volume, low volume three. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, he gonna get the yeah, mids though. Oh yeah, for sure. He gonna get them. Yeah, free throws too. Yeah, he lead the league in that shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. cause he. I mean, his play style. I'm a big fan of because he, he's very versatile, but he, he gets yeah, bro. He's I don't a, be tripping off that free he's throw a spin shit. Spin move guy, yeah, nah. Because I mean, they go, teach you as a kid, like bro, get to the get line. to the line. Nobody, nobody hated Dwayne Wade when he was doing it. That's what I say. I don't know. They be nitpicking now. Yeah. I don't yeah. understand it. I, I fuck with it though. So you cover that. You cover that in your pod, and of course you cover um, just regular sports. Yeah. Type of, you tap into some other shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. How how's it been so far doing the shit dolo? It's cool. Coming from a trio, it's cool. It's um. It is a little. It's a little different because I'm used to um, asking certain shit or or having somebody to say something for me to respond to or whatever. But it, it's cool. It's yeah. cool. I um, it's interesting because you're really just talking to yourself. Yeah, you're talking. To it's yourself. different. Yeah, and uh, I like it though overall. Um, one of the differences is the comedic aspect of when I did it before. Like there were a lot of uh, funny things we would do. Um, we were. We would do uh, what you call it, reactions. Sometimes reactions. Cool, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, the one of the benefits of it is just it's everything I decide to cover. Sometimes there may have been there, you know, there was a situation where I'm not the biggest MMA guy, and one of my uh, 
counterparts wanted to cover MMA or he wasn't the biggest football guy. You know, there could be news in baseball. And I could just talk about anything. That's that's the biggest pro. Yeah, facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. I definitely I get with you on that. It's always I always say like when you master that, it's nothing you can't do. That's yeah. why I appreciate Colin Coward so much. Cause yeah. even though he does have a co-host, I don't really look at them as a co-host because he talks most of the time. And he, he calls like, on them when they need to say exactly. So like, and I said this before. You know how hard it is to talk for seven straight minutes, no filter, and he does it effortlessly. Yeah. But it's not easy though. But like he's just been doing it for so long. Like man, I've been watching Colin since he was on ESPN The Herd. Mm-hmm. So like when I when I watch certain people. As as far as speaking, like by yourself for a long stretch, I study yeah. him. Yeah, oh yeah, I, I'm a big like. You asked me before the show. You was like, what, "What do you watch besides like on TV?" Like, Colin Coward, uh, undisputed. I'll catch some uh, first take. Get up. Like I watch sports shows all day long. Yeah. Um, listen to their podcast. Like, Pretty I, much the same for me too. I feel like yeah. Old head now. Like that's what I used to do. <laughs> but like that's that's all I do. But yeah, Kyle, even though. I mean, you got to think when we was going to school, coming up, getting up, we was watching Mike and Mike in the morning, all that shit. Like, right before we was getting ready, I love Mike and Mike, too. That was a great, great morning show. Yeah, but that's what's up, man. Yeah, y'all definitely tap into that, man. That's that's one of my favorite pods that I got to catch now. And then more frequent now, you starting to get your your volume up, too. That'd Mm -hmm. be dope, too. I always say, like, when you get about 25 to 30 in... Mm -hmm. You really start to settle in. That's a solid foundation, yeah. and then you continue to get better. Continue for to get sure, better. Sure. So, like, once you tap into that twenty-five to thirty episode window, it'll become like second nature, bro. You oh, yeah. go ahead, load your shit up, and then you be like, "Damn!" Like in comparison to your first episode to your thirtieth episode, yeah, yeah it'd be nine days. Then once you tap over fifty, oh shit, now you're in a hundred. And that's the fun it'd be part like I'm looking forward it's to. Fun, like, yeah, like I've never been one to to want everything to be perfect. Like even when I did OTH, we started the first episode saying like it's gonna be ass for a while, like. And we was gonna make a compilation of like the worst moments, like mm-hmm. once we got into it. And <laughs> yeah. even now, like doing it myself, like I've uh my first episode I tried to do outside of the park. Uh-huh. Dogs was out, like it was, you know what I'm saying? The ocean was a little loud. I was at Riverfront. So um I've had trials in there, but it's fun, you know what I'm saying? I and I got the utmost respect for y'all because I'll come in and sit down and see you and Drew and and Umo here just yeah, yeah. just moving around. Mike, check this. Boom, boom. Y'all be quiet, and it's like one thing is said. Next person, it's 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 a uh, it's real dope. You you'll start dope. to pick up on certain things and how to transition certain topics yeah. and, and stuff like that. Like you know, uh, sometimes you might have to shoot certain shit off the hip. Like even me learning like uh, recently when I started doing interviews and shit. Like at, at first, I really wasn't an interview guy. Right. That wasn't really my steeds, but now I'm learning that having conversations with Drew also. It's like that shit. Be, it's like second nature. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So it it came was kind of natural for me to like ask certain questions. Like, of course, I know about them, so I know which ask uh, which questions to ask mm-hmm. in a certain type of form. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you you'll start to pick up different shit about yourself that you never knew when you started doing yeah, this shit. But yeah, like, oh I shit! Like, I really am good at this. Okay, yeah. I can work at this. I can do that. So it's all about growth, man. And like I always tell you, bro. Stay consistent with that for shit, sure, for, for sure. sure, for sure. So we had some wild shit happening um, during the week. Uh, Troy Ave and um, Tax on Case. Well, it's technically Tax on Case, but Troy yeah, Ave is involved. testifying. We all know this stems from the 2016 uh, Irvin Plaza shooting. If you don't know, um, I think three people were shot. One was killed, one being Troy Ave's bodyguard, Banger. Um, Troy Ave was also shot two times. Uh, Troy Ave got hit with attempted murder and reckless endangerment charges. Uh, Tax Stone got hit with attempted murder, murder, and possession of a weapon. Now they're on trial for his case for the murder. And, you know, Troy Ave has recently been kind of just, I don't know, this nigga been in a different type of zone. Nigga been dropping diss tracks. You know, he got a podcast. He been doing podcast episodes. Um... I don't know, man. He took the stand. He basically, you know, told his side of the story, what happened. And I don't know, man. This whole shit I felt like could have been avoided because it's it's ultimately two people, egos, who have really got them in this situation. Tax Stone um, is one of the biggest and oldest cases of wasted talent. Like, that's... Tax Stone had the podcast game on live. 100%. Like... like one hundred percent. That's very unfortunate. What happened? And and if you watch like his Vlad interviews and Park and just anything leading up to it, he was 
he was letting you know, like he was he was the the real Takashi in a way. Like Takashi was running around saying, "You try me, you gonna find out." Like antagonizing, yeah. Bullying. Tax wasn't he a he was literally like, was picking on Troy Ave, yeah, a long like time. for a very long time. Like he did it to math and all that stuff. And and when it happened, that was one of those things where like for like months it didn't come out what had happened. Yeah, but I didn't if, know what if it, you would. It wasn't until that he got arrested. Yeah, but if you followed, I, like if you saw the first um, footage that leaked. I saw that ball spot and I said, "Oh man, it's over." <laughs> I saw there's one part where he ducked and you see the ball spot, you see the donut. <laughs> I said, "Oh man, tax about to be in all gray sweatsuit soon." Or something. <sighs> um, that's just an unfortunate spot. situation, but that I mean, that's just that too tough nature, and I and I feel like he was just conditioned to be that way. Like he he was one of those Coming jail birds, yeah, yeah. He from the streets. Like nobody would, I don't think anybody would really say tax was fake like that, like. No, nah. he, was, he was he was by that as you can see. You but I think I think he should have put his his profession above that for sure, for yeah. sure. Because he had he had got to that point like, oh, he still, was hitting his peak. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. there. When I feel like when you are on the beneficial side of of or let me re- reword that when somebody has to type in Tax Stone Beanie Siegel interview to get that masterpiece of a podcast episode after he got beat up by Meat Guy or whatever, like you did that. You know what I'm saying? That that's so he was you got to type in tax off. stone whatever for so many pieces of content, and he was real. He was he didn't have shame. He didn't have a filter. Um, he was making connections. It, it's just an unfortunate situation. One of his best interviews he did with Meek when it was in the Wraith. That was like mm-hmm. October 2016. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it's crazy because Urban Plaza shit happened May 2016. Mm-hmm. He got arrested January 2017. And it's crazy to think that shit was six years ago. And I just look at it like, bro, he literally would have been close, in my opinion, to like that upper eight to nine figure he, deal he'd podcast been making that, type deal. That Gillian Wallow money. He for yeah. sure would have. Yeah. He for sure would have. Because he wasn't. He's, he was one of the even podcaster was a baby baby then, but mm-hmm. he was crossing over into that I'm yeah. one of the top dogs in this he, shit. Yeah. Especially for as as our, as our culture. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's it's he was like he would have been like the Joe Rogan of of, of been, our shit. He would have yeah. been because he wasn't he wasn't really gimmicky. Nah, he had I mean had no filter, none. But he was authentic. He was authentic. So Troy Av on his like I, Troy I, Av is unlikable. He's an unlikable guy in a way. He is. Which is that's I can see why. Thing. Yeah, and and like if you really follow it, like you can't be mad. You can really you really should be mad at Tax more so because he invited that energy. He was an antagonizer forever. He. He did all. He brought all that on himself. He brought it all on Troy Ave and his man's. You know. Let me let me play but, devil's advocate. So, what about even putting his man's in that situation? His security, because even though he is security, you don't want your security to crash out neither. So, like when he was on the, Troy Ave? Uh, yeah. yeah. So he was like, oh, he's like, I said, I'm a rock him. And he, he gave him a and wink he walked or whatever. Up, he walked up on him. Yeah. And then, you know, that's when he got shot. You see know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't even had okayed that in that no. situation. I was telling somebody not too long ago. I said. There are far too many people who brag about having a crash dummy on the team. Well, yes. I, my niggas don't give a fuck about nothing. I feel like every entourage needs a pussy. Even if that's over, that, that might be the strong. <laughs> I feel like every entourage I get what you needs mean. a passive yeah. guy on the roster to tell you why that's not a good idea. Like, you winking and you lobbed him, really. You lob- Yes. That's how I look at it. You alley-ooped him. He didn't say, I'm going to go I'm gonna go defuse this. And you say, yeah, go ahead, do that for me. He said, I'm going to go. Pop off! I'm gonna punch him. I'm gonna rock him. Yeah, this is a guy. I feel, you have to take all threats serious. I don't believe in not taking somebody serious because at the end of the day, John Lennon got killed by somebody who gave him he gave an autograph to like two minutes before. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you gotta you gotta take all threats serious. He's been antagonizing this man forever, and he's not no sucker. Mm-mm. He got shot bullying somebody, mm-hmm. according to him. He got shot in the face bullying somebody for years. Mm. No, no, it should it shouldn't have been that. It should have been. If anything, try to squash that shit beforehand, but the whole telling thing or, or testifying against him and all that. That's, that's what I was going to be my, that was going to yeah, be the next yeah. conversation. So how do you feel about people saying that, oh, he's a rat and, you know, for testifying and all this other shit, you know, the street code and all this other shit? Well, I have my own, I have my own. I feel like that. people say when you, you sign that invisible contract or whatever it is, what it is, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And everything... <laughs> People have a habit of, of excusing something by something you should have thought of beforehand. Right. When you sign that invisible contract, you should have thought of if anything happens and I have to do was just morally right, I can't do it. 
Mm-hmm. People forget, you know, uh, I'm trying to trying to figure out how to word this, but like for instance, if somebody like Ten Crack Commandments, never keep shit where you lay out or whatever, mm-hmm. right? If somebody breaks in your house and harms your people, trying to get some drugs, it may be wrong. It is wrong, but in that life. In that in that life was you know what I'm saying it's, it's all in the, it's, it's all, all in, the, in game. the game it's all in the game and that you got to think I of think that about kind of that uh, that that clip from the Y with Levy when he was talking to uh, yeah what was dog name uh, Orlando yeah exactly yeah exactly like you gotta you want to be in the game well here's the game yeah now. yeah yeah so don't don't later say oh well this is what should have happened or just embrace that shit just embrace it just say you know what I signed up I said this is what it is. Call me what you want to call me, but I got to do what's right. Don't try to, I'm doing what's right and you can't call me that. No, nah, you can't have it both ways. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have did that. Because a lot of people would say when you sign up for the game, people would say, well, if you, something does happen to you, you handle that in the streets. You don't get police involved. And that's what I was getting at. Yeah. Yeah. People, when people do this too, they don't understand the extent that others go to to uphold that. Mm-hmm. There are people who... There are people who might have got shot or whatever who refused to tell the cops what happened because they had every intention on and actually killed that person who did it to them because that's what should be done in that lifestyle. So, yeah, right now, like, your your best recourse is just to go up there and say what happened. But there are guys that would have said, no, nah, I've never seen tax a day in my life. And five minutes later from him getting acquitted, would have, yeah, there would have been no And that's crazy because that was a scene in BMF yeah. between, uh, between Lamar and uh, Meech. When they was in the police interrogation room, mm-hmm. and they was basically just you know talking in code, but yeah. it was basically like, nah, I ain't never yeah, seen them before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. um, I was, I they handled, they've like, been handling they beef in the streets, and and, right. and I get it. Is, and also, this is coming from a perspective of somebody who's not in the streets, but I understand how, like, I know people who've been in the streets, so I understand how the mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people would say that some people would say Troy is right. And some people say Troy is wrong. Yeah. It just depends on who you talk to. So, exactly. I mean, I look at it like two guys who obviously had disdain for each other. You know, some shit happened. Shit got out of hand. And because, you know, in exchange for his testimony, he like he was facing like 15 years. But mm-hmm. like with his testimony, he'll get like a year. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people was calling him a rad and yeah. this and the third. And a lot of people, I've seen a couple of people who, you know, who say they from the streets. They not even mad at at, yeah. uh, at Troy for that. You know, in, my, in modern times, I think I said this to somebody not too long. Ago. Guess it's all perspective. Yeah, when the reason people feel comfortable telling like Alpo or whoever else, whoever else is out there, is because my reputation may be tarnished, but Alpo the Rat still killed fourteen people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Whoever. Whoever else you want to name, they still did whatever they did to make them who they are, and you probably wouldn't try them. They said Alpo got out of prison, was going to Harlem, still trapping, smacking niggas who was talking down on him. They said he was taking pictures and everything when he right. came home. That's how he used to, uh, what's his face? Gully TV said that's how he used to, like, emasculate you. He would take pictures with dudes who was talking greasy about him. So I say wow. that to say, um, <laughs> there are people who are saying they're not mad at him, and they may acknowledge that, but that's a. Nowadays, I don't think too many people care. That, I was just about like, to ask that. Do you think that shit is like kind of like the whole? Because, you know, so I was talking to my grandfather yesterday, yeah. and uh, you know, he used to be in a police force in New York, mm-hmm. and um, he was uh, I think I forgot how we got on the topic, but uh, he was talking about Frank Lucas, mm-hmm. and no, because he was talking about a guy. He he said uh, Bumpy Johnson was yeah. from Charleston. Yeah, yeah. I had never known that. Yeah, Bumpy and uh, Fritz, who used to give. Yeah. Uh, all so then I was, I was like, oh, because I, I told I said, did you know that uh, it was either Nicky Barnes or Frank Lucas? I was like, you know, one of them is in Walterboro or somewhere around. He was like, oh, yeah, they, they was down here. Mm-hmm. And um, I stayed in Lincolnville and he was telling me, yeah, them dudes from down there. like, yeah, man, we going to see Frank. We going to see Frank. And the, 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 shit was, the shit was crazy. Like, they be still be idolizing yeah. these dudes. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. say he denied witness protection and all that shit. So, yeah. I mean, they still be out here just moving because freely however they want, I guess. At the end of the day, it's all a part of the game. It's a, I hate when people try to make certain shit seem cool. Like, all right, yeah, if you just selling weed or whatever, I don't think you that bad. But if you in the streets and you selling poison to people, why is the guy that tells on you to, to get out, why is he lesser morally than you who's doing what he's doing? Why is the guy who's robbing you? A lot of people in the, in the drug game hate robbers. They think that's weak. They think it's weak to be a stick-up guy. But you're selling poison. Why Why do y'all try to have this tallest midget in the circus, 
you know, ranking with immoral shit. So yeah, when, when basically it comes like to, the you. So you would you, you're basically talking about like the Omar's basically Omar. Yeah, Lewis. yeah. Like people don't like them. People don't like tattletales and all that other stuff. Which yeah, I get it. It's all wrong. But at the end of the day, it's all wrong. I don't I don't feel like too many people care. Like people do like still I care like about I I get like it. That. I get it in terms yeah. of in the confines of the game. Yeah. Because like when I look at the scene between Lamar and Meech on BMF, I get it. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? It's like, no, nah, we but don't got to get we don't got to get no civilian people type involved in our shit. Too, though. That's another thing. That's now, another if you thing. You tell on your mans, I think you're horrible. I feel like everyone, even if oh, you're yeah, not in that lifestyle, yeah. if you told on your sister for something y'all did together. You I was just shit. about to bring you that up. Saying? Yeah, that's stupid. That I, I feel like that's when people say, "Oh, stay in a civilian's place." Well, it may be a civilian's place because the topic at hand is crime. But yeah. when it comes to someone you trusted, y'all did something together, and you tell on them. That's it's the same thing regardless. across the board. Yeah, yeah. It's morally yeah, wrong yeah, yeah. regardless. It's across the board. But like a lot of times, like people, I've seen like a Vlad interview with like BG Knockout from LA. He was like, oh yeah, he was like Mexicans, like they'll go testify on an op gang member or whatever. Like that, that's not a wow. common practice. People people will tell on their ops and then their people will welcome them back. Like they don't be minding that kind of shit. But if you tell on somebody that like is your man, they helps you down, all the shit, yeah, that's, you just come back. So how you feel how do you feel this whole case is gonna play out? Because honestly, if I if I had to predict, I don't see it playing out in tax favor at oh, all. Oh, tax is done. Tax I don't see done. it. Based off the prints, mm-hmm. prints on a magazine. Yeah. Um reputation. Tax T Rogers, who was like he brought the Blackstone Bloods from Chicago or Blackstones from Chicago to LA, a very reputable Blood member, like on that side, and everything said Tax Stone was his higher security when he was 14 years old when he came to New York. God City damn, Tax Stone is real, like he's stamped. Like, there's not like some guy that just people are like, oh, yeah, he's cool. No, he was 18, he should have been in ninth grade, and he was like security for this man. So, he was really about that. Mm-hmm. Judges are giving sentences based off reputation. They're I about, have seen that lately. You heard about ARAB? They yeah. said ARAB got that 45 because he was in, in the courtroom slouching, me mugging all of his behavior. Mm. They can they can give you whatever sentence based they off your give rep. You. Yeah. Tax is done, and it's a very unfortunate and it's crazy situation. because he's already sitting for the the uh, the firearm charge, mm-hmm. which he pled guilty to. Mm-hmm. Like he's basically just fighting a murder. And he's a felon, and he's a felon. Yes, that's that's he's another that's blood. another factor he's... to this shit. And just just listening off uh, Troy Av's account, mm-hmm. that whole shit was just wild. I mean, he talking about even how they was down to the wrestling. He took the yeah. gun from him because yeah. he like he saw the flash. He got shot. And then, you know, he wrestled, took the gun away from him. Now, Troy was wilding for even, like, shooting at him while he was running yeah, away. Yeah. But I get it. In the heat of the moment, you know, all that. Then his mans was, it, it just was all bad. And I felt like the whole shit could have been avoided off of ego, man. Ego, ego, ego. Ego. Because Sax was big on, oh, I want one of you rappers to try me. I he, want one of you. He wanted to prove himself so bad for somebody yeah. who didn't have to. That's the unfortunate and thing. Then, but I also, I can't, Troy Ave does have some accountability in this shit, too. For, oh, yeah. Lobbying his mans. Mm-hmm. Because in that situation, if it's me and I know somebody's in there I know I don't fuck with, I'm not going to put... Because you have a family to go to, home to at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably got kids. I don't know Banger had kids, but he got kids that want to see him. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, sure, my security. So things... Ha- but we also have to have preventable measures too. Yeah. Just because you're my security don't mean you got to automatically die, die for me. me. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? No, that's not how that shit, that's not how that shit work. Day. Because your job is very, like, your life is precious and you're doing a dangerous yeah. job. But for him to even tell him, like, because it was Bengal told him, like, yeah, I'm a, I would like, no, bro, like, no, yeah. leave that alone. And, and I mean, it ain't worth it. Even before that, like, squashing a beef don't mean you got to be cool with somebody. And I feel like yeah, that's yeah, one of the yeah, biggest yeah, yeah, misconceptions yeah. now that you can squash your beef and never talk about somebody, never hang around them, whatever it is. Y'all could have squashed that. Y'all could have had a phone call. Y'all could have cursed each other out and just agreed, let's not speak on each other. That's it. There are people in hip hop that you, the rumors about Birdman and or Cash Money and No Limit have been out there for years. Yeah, you know, P and Birdman. And yeah. if it's true, you don't see you don't see Birdman and, and P around each other. No, nah, they don't even speak on each other. Yeah, they might have name dropped each other a couple times, but they keep it. They say what I said pretty much. Like, we squash ain't you know what I'm when, when P was on the documentary, when they was covering New Orleans, and, you know, the most P always says, like, you know, I give them credit for what they did. Right. Basically, like, we was over here on this side, they was, was over here yeah, on that yeah. side. But he just keep it at that. He exactly. don't speak on nothing don't, else. Yeah, and you can tell yeah. that, of course, like, they don't see. But it was never, like, I've never seen Birdman or P ever, like, just getting wild disrespectful yeah, on each there's other. No, there's no, but you know they don't fuck with each exactly, other. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's all it got to be. But it's, it's just disappointing. It's a, 
it's one of the biggest black eyes in, in our culture, in my opinion. If somebody dies, somebody lost the promise in future. Tax Stone was a trash, I mean, Troy Ave was a, tax, uh, a trash rapper to me, but he probably could have, you know, did something else. But it's just, Tax Stone is the most disappointing. In that uh, yes, he's man. the most disappointing in that situation he's because it, it was him, then Butter, and of course, but he was leading the train for what it is today. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, you look at all these podcasters now and, you know, who's getting deals here and doing all this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. Tax probably could have been to a point now where he would have been, he probably would have separated from loudspeakers and started his own network. Yeah. You never know. He was a, but he had that much influence and that much he's reach. He's a big what if, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's a, a big, big what if. if. And trust me, I would love to see him come home. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? I would love to Absolutely. see him come home. I don't want to see Tax Stone go down for this shit. But it's, un and like I say, unfortunately, you got to be held accountable for your actions. Mm -hmm. And I remember I hear somebody say, bro, it only take like three seconds for your life to change. Yeah. You heard about Wallow when he uh, he said his old seller used to ask him how much time? Yeah. You heard that? I remember so he was telling that story. He said it took, I can't remember what it like was. Like 15 but seconds or something like robbery, that? robbery, yeah. That's all it took to get him 20 years. I just, I 15 just seconds cost him 25 years, 20 years. I just wish more people was, was mindful of certain shit. I just, that, that, that didn't need to happen. Because he, he planned that. He, he went there. He got dressed. He did all that stuff. He made sure he took his gun with him. He got in the building. And you, that doesn't just fuck you over. That, you got to understand, that was in Irvin Plaza. Like, smacking URL, like battle rap chains. Like, so many A lot of shit rappers, came through Irvin yeah, Plaza. Yeah. Get their money. That was CI show. He was supposed yeah, to be opening up. Yeah that, yeah, that fucked up the rap market in New York for a while, I'm sure. Like, that's an ugly. Story. I heard he's suing uh, Live Nation, too, for $32 million. Yeah, some, I knew he was suing them. I knew it had something to do with, like, the security guards letting him get in with the gun. Let him get in with the gun and all that. I'm not mad at that, though. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. It cost some money. It probably cost some partnerships after that. Um, but it's just, I just think now, even us, just even speaking as black men in general, mm -hmm. I think we have to really shed the everything doesn't need to result to to uh, vibe. even in the smallest little things like I see back and forth on Twitter, elevate to oh yeah nigga let's bro, meet why up. Why are you dropping your address on Twitter? That is crazy. <laughs> Niggas are dropping in the the the, uh, the the inbox or the 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 actual timeline or, or posting somebody else's like I know where you at us over what over what I have no problem with people thinking I'm soft about some shit like I know what. Wouldn't be done to me. You know what I'm saying? His, I know what I know the the extent I would go to 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 pr protect my life and anyone around me. I've done. I've done. I wouldn't allow. So. I've done some stupid shit before yeah. because of of arguments and disrespect that I felt like was. I've literally like told people like I'll be here. We can meet up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've dropped my number in mm -hmm. people's uh, inboxes for them to call me. All type of shit. But at the end of the day, it's like it's not worth it. It's it stupid. Worth it. It like I, I was having an exchange the other day. With somebody, and the exchange that I had, if somebody else would have had that exchange, they probably would have been like, "Oh, nigga, fuck you, that I'm gonna do what I want." So, dude was tripping because he was like, he was like, "Nigga, you don't gotta quote tweet everything. You could just reply to me in the thread." And I was just like, I said, uh, "I was like, we can agree to disagree." Yeah. And the quoting thing is just a habit. Don't take it personal. Yeah, yeah. And, and let's just leave it at that. You see what I'm saying? That, right. And like, but and other niggas probably would look at that shit like, who the fuck you talking? I yeah. quote whatever the fuck I want. It's I, like, it's stupid. And that's what it's I'm stupid. talking about when I say shit like, I have no problem with somebody. Because that dude probably walked away like, yeah, son, this nigga Mike. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> but I know you, it, it's not that serious. It's you know not. what I'm saying? And, and I got too much to lose. It. Yeah, exactly. I got too much to lose. A lot of stuff ain't, ain't that serious, man. And what I realized is you got to be mindful. I remember Kevin Gates said this on the interview. He was like, uh, it's like when I see that you you like you wild or you really into, I gotta like I gotta separate myself from you because you gonna make me go there. Yeah. Now I'm fucked up, yeah, and it's yeah. like you gotta be mindful of niggas who don't care and who ain't got nothing to lose. Yeah, them two type of niggas you gotta stay you away got, from yeah. Yeah, that's because a, a you plus. can't crowd shout over niggas who ain't got nothing to lose. And in most <laughs> cases, me, it be the niggas who got nothing to, nothing lose, to lose willing to take nothing it there. It's they like no, fuck no, everything up for everybody. I've always realized. That. I remember. <laughs> When Gilly and Wallow was arguing with Wack 100, and he was talking about like the bosses and shit, he's like, "You never seen such and such fight, mm -hmm. like the leaders of like yeah. uh, mob bosses and all that. Shit. You never see them fight. No. It be it be somebody other than them or something no. like that. You know, but that's some real shit though. The and that's something that's kind of it's not really off topic, but a different approach to that whole mob thing for our black culture to be so obsessed with mob bosses and and people naming themselves Gotties and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. The mob sit down and talk." The, the, the head of the Genovese and the head of the whatever, Ichi family will sit down and say, yeah, your son killed my son. This one got car bombed. This happened. We going to squash it. 
violence, bloodshed. Yeah. Like money being taken. They like, do have sit downs. They have sit downs. And then the in and, and hey, you got Troy Ave and, and Tax Stone words. You know what I'm saying? Taunting. No no bloodshed up until that point. And no bloodshed up until that point. We can't yeah. get past words, but these people that we want to idolize and they call get past mafias, people really dying. Get past people dying. You know what I'm saying? Like, like really, hey, just hit my man off with what 500k. We good. I don't got my son here. Your daughter got she paralyzed. You know what I'm saying? But they'll squash it. But here we are. You said this. You said this. Now I got your address. You got mine. I'm telling you, I know where your where your girl work. And it started because I said Cam Newton was overrated. <laughs> Word, that should be That's wild as hell. Be, I love, I love looking at Twitter exchanges and seeing what started it. Yes, I saw, I saw guns on Twitter the other day because one dude called a chick cute, and it escalated to that. And they got the crush on the same woman. This is where she at. This is where they at. It's a triangle of people on a map. They not close to each other. And <laughs> guns is being shown on the internet. It's ridiculous. It's embarrassing. And embarrassing, yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's embarrassing. That's what, I, like I said. I you, no that's what I start thinking about when I have exchanges with people. Mm-hmm. Like, even if we having a conversation on spaces, and I kind of like been kind of staying away from spaces, because niggas really can't have a, an adult conversation without, like a nigga was telling, I was talking about CJ Stroud the other day in a, in a space, and I was talking about our old line this nigga just blurred, so this nigga don't know what the fuck he talking about. Panthers O-line is trash. So I said to myself, I'm like, bro, I literally watched, we had one of the best old, I said, matter of fact, I'm not even about to argue with you. He's like, nigga, I stay in North Carolina, da 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 I'll be, okay. For what? If that's your opinion, bro, cool. They're telling me, oh, if if, if, if the Panthers say CJ, he don't do this. I said, bro, listen, the question was, what do I think about it? If you have your own view on it, that's cool. Yeah. I'm not mad at your view. This is my opinion, bro. Sure, so if you feel like he's... A, that's what I'm saying. So it's just like, oh, shit. like, And it's not going to stop, it seem like. No. So you just got to know how to handle it. You see what I'm saying? Like, And it's, it's never worth it to take it there at the end of the day. It's never worth it because it it's, it's, it's stupid for one. And I always go back to the foundation. And I say, bro, listen, what's the foundation of this argument to, to now we're here? Yeah. We disagree on this. We won't agree. That's fine. I do that. And I say... <laughs> The what if. If I was to get up with this dude, we get into it, and one of us loses our lives, how would oh, I sound- Oh, man, that's in, selfish. How would I sound calling my wife or calling my mother and saying, I'm prob- you probably won't see me for 38 years because I disagree with this man over the, the, the state of our offensive line? <sighs> if, you, if you get back to so many, if you really simplify- Yeah, get back to the so foundation. So these yeah. things, it's like- it's stupid for one, and then how would I sound saying this happened because of that? People mm-hmm. dying over stepping on somebody's shoes, and and you bump me at a club. That's why I hate when I see people brag about how confrontational they get off of liquor, or I get this in me, and man, yeah. I'm this way. For what? Why are you like that? I don't think being non-confrontational is a bad thing, neither. No. They and, try to put a, a negative stigma on that, or basically like you're pussy if you're non-confrontational. Yeah. And, I, like, and I've been on the other side. stupid. I've been, yeah. the, I've been in the yeah. car, leaving the gun range with... Three pistols on me and an AK in the car. And somebody beside me is, is what happened? It was somebody, I was leaving the range, and somebody thought I almost tried to hit him or whatever. They was clearly having a bad day because they was walking front down Sam Rittenberg. I was leaving quick shot or whatever. And they, like, smacked the hood of my car and um, was just, you know, like, taunting me. And the other guy trying to get him away. Like, in that moment, I could have smoked him. Yeah, but the other person is obviously trying to, like. They're trying to stop him. Yeah. But even on my end, as, as the could be aggressor or the one that could have yeah. really taught him a lesson i chose not to go that route or he, was, he wasn't the biggest dude i could have got out and whooped his ass yeah and i chose not to, to <laughs> yeah, do anything yeah, yeah. i just feel like too many like there's no there's nothing to gain from a lot of this shit. nah hell no nothing to it's, gain. no and, and a lot of times you just got to sit back and be like nah like damn like honestly i be sitting with them dudes who be getting it like that off of shit that's not that serious mm-hmm. i'd be like damn bro like I hope whatever I say to myself, I hope whatever it is, dog, okay. going through, like you know that shit, because I it's, no life is good. Yeah, life you know what I'm saying, and it's like it's cool. Yeah, of course you got your ups and down, but you got too much at stake to be like passing like, or or throwing it away over bullshit. Over bullshit. 
over bullshit. It's like, no, I'm not gonna crash out over 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 nothing like that. And that that seems to be a topic that a lot of people feel like, oh, like, you know, if you're not willing, to, it's like, no, like, nobody's in control of my actions but it's, me. It's, and it's that's funny, it. It's funny what people deem is real or what makes you a real man or woman by doing it. Like, I remember hearing like the loudest guy in the room is the weakest, and now it almost feels like the loudest guy is the applauded. You'll see a confrontation and the guy that's chilling. You, there'll be a guy chilling, somebody barking on him or whatever, and they'd be like, yeah, he wasn't playing. Like, the loud guy wasn't playing. He really... The loud oh, guy the, wasn't the playing. The quiet guy, like, now now we think this of you. It's like, nah, I don't... Nah, he just probably knew it wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> no. You always got to go back to it. Because then, you know, they're going to say, oh, this nigga's stupid. He cried. Now nah, he got 30. Exactly. Ah, yeah. but you know... But I was talking like two seconds ago. Yeah, I was talking like two seconds ago. Yeah, but look what that shit cost me. And that'd be my thing. Niggas are champion that shit until... Somebody get the time, or they on the other side. Yeah. So yeah. now, now what? Because you got to think in your mind. Oh shit! Is it worth it in this moment to protect my quote unquote ego for you know the views of the world? Mm. Rather be Instagram, rather be Twitter. But ego is probably the biggest killer right now. Oh hell yeah! Even, hell yeah! Even non direction. I think I think the P and B shit was ego. I think he wanted to say I've sat in this restaurant and nothing happened to me. That whole and situation that, was so that that makes me so mad because yeah. it's a father son duo for one, and like for you to again alley oop your son for something like that, that's some real low down sucker shit, Pops bro. Wasn't like, no gangster. He was just another lost nigga. Another lost nigga, man. That shit is is just fucked up. But yeah. it like even in the trend of rapping, we see rappers die over you know nothing really. Nothing. And you know the whole, you know, when we talked about the whole Jay Prince take off Migos thing, I don't want to see nobody from either side. I have my feelings about how the Prince family's been handling it. That don't mean I want to see them die behind the shit because it's stupid. Because then now if he died, then what's the next domino to fall? Yeah. Then the domino after that. Then the domino after that. It just continues blush and blush. And that's why I harp it back to, uh, you know, the whole the whole theme around to kind of just transition into Snowfall about, you know. Just after watching the last episode with Jerome, he's like really getting to the point where it's like, bro, like this shit ain't really worth it. So what's going? So I like, know Jerome from the uh, teach a man how to squabble. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, see a yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a definitely one of the most. Uh, so basically, just characters. just to give you, him and Franklin are going at it. Yeah, yeah. I saw they had the little diner scene. Their crew's going at it. His crew's going at it. Them boys are like, mm-hmm. it's family versus family. People, bodies have been dropped, all that type of shit. And now it's getting to the point with Jerome, like the, the one of the last scenes from the last episode, he's sitting on top of his BMW and his beeper's going off and he's drinking and he just tosses that shit in the trash can. And then before that, he went to his homeboy's car shop and he got mad at his homeboy because he's like, you know, his homeboy basically separated from that mm-hmm. shit. Because mm-hmm. when he first pulled up, he told him like, yeah, man, I might not be able to fit you in until like, you know, the next couple of days, but in reality, you only had like two cars there. Yeah. So he stayed there the whole time. He was like, "Yeah, I have you." Like he he gave us some money. He was like, "I appreciate sure you get this done for me." It's like, "All right, man, I fit you in. Come back a couple of hours." Like, "Nah, I stay here and chill." Like Jerome's like, "Nah, I stay here mm-hmm. and chill. I haven't touched the. I haven't been under the hood of a car in a minute." Yeah. So then, there's this car circling around the shop. So his homeboys, like, man, that's probably about the second or third time I done seen that car mm-hmm. circling around. And Jerome's like, "So what is it to you?" Yeah. Jerome go pop the trunk, pull out the He's like, hey, come on, man. He's like, no, no. You love me, right? Da, da. Like, the shit is just crazy. Like, that whole, you have to watch the scene, mm-hmm. but it's basically on some, like, he getting to the point now where it's like, bro, this shit ain't, yeah, like, is this it shit is. worth it? Yeah, yeah. But I don't think that's where it really was. I think it's in the same context, yes, Mike. But the ego. I'm, I'm going to step back onto that. Yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. And that. In that, the what triggered it was the conversation between um, buddy who got beat up by um, what's the nigga name with the cornrows? Leon. Leon. All right. The nigga who got beat up by Leon. Yeah, they he had came, the conversation. Yeah. In the so bar. he came. He was like, "Nah, nigga, you're the OG. I'm the young blood." Basically saying, "Like, I'm when you're gone, I'm still going to be here." Essentially, right. and that's what triggered the nigga to be like. Man, fuck that, I'm going out. And then that's when Shorty was like, where are you going? Because everybody's looking for him. They're hiding in the club because they know the streets are hot right now. So he goes to the shop. In his, in his mind, he's thinking, I'm going to be out in front, but I'm going to go with another OG, which he went to his homeboy spot. 
because as the OGs, if shit pop off, I'm going to show these niggas what's up. Yeah. That's why the nigga went to the trunk when he said, okay, this is the second time the car rolled by. Nigga went to go get his Uzi. You know yep. what I'm saying? So then the nigga like, no, no, no. Like, this nigga, that's how I eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't on that type of time no more. And then the nigga really had to sit back and be like, damn. All right, then it, fuck it, then it's just me. So then he goes to the liquor store, and now he's outside the liquor store. And in his mind, he's ready to go to war. He's ready to prove a fucking point, no matter what it is. And that's a sick nigga right there. You see what I'm saying? Because of his his ego has completely taken over. His logic thinking ain't Morals there. Morals ain't in, in nothing. At that point. Yeah. He's not thinking about his wife. He's not thinking about the business. He's not thinking about none of this shit. He's just thinking blood needs to be shed. Niggas need to fear me. And that's what, like, that's that's a dangerous nigga, though. I'm glad that you brought up that conversation at the bar. So the dude Leon had fought, had basically took over his spot when Leon moved to Africa, came back. No more got into a fight. He ended up leaving. So he went to the bar to they talk to- to Africa like in belly? Basically, <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, shit. So he went to the bar to talk to Jerome and Louis to basically like, hey, man, like, he got a drop, da da da. But they was on some. Hey man, we got to keep business flowing. So mm-hmm. whoever running the projects, that's who we doing business with. Right. So then he got mad, cursed Louis out. He's like, "Hey, let's go ahead and leave." So when they was talking, he's like, "Bro, me and you, like," he said, "What I fear is these young niggas. They ain't got no code, no respect. We the last of a dying breed." He said, "Nah, you the last of the dying breed." And when he heard that, that's when like when Drew said he went to go talk to his homeboy, mm-hmm. and he was like, "When well, he pulled out the Uzi, his homeboy was like, "Hey, bro, like, no, like," he's like, "I love you." But I got a kid I got to go home to. Yeah. Kids. He pulled the cut. I got, like, I got a wife at home. He's like, I love you, bro, but no. Yeah. And then Jerome was like, you know what? I apologize for ruining y'all day, da, da, da. And that's when he rolled out and went. To, but you could tell he just on some, I don't give a fuck no more. When he looked at that beeper and he saw that beeper number, he tossed that shit in the trash can and kept drinking. It was like, just yeah. don't give a fuck no more, bro. And it, it just speaks to... That's why I what I really been appreciating about Snowfall so much is because it really it, it does speak to a lot of mental like Jerome really has some serious like traumas that he's dealt with, something he probably has never like really come to grips with because from the beginning of the show, the way he's at now mm-hmm. is definitely a 180. Yeah. Like he was always a street dude, like he was selling nickels and dime back shit like that. But when he got deep in the game with Franklin, as far as like moving weight, and now he got his own territory, and now he's like head of a gang war, like he got police on him, he got the mm-hmm. streets on him. It's completely. It's it's starting to really weigh down on him, and that's one thing I can say about the show that I appreciate is like the mental aspect of somebody's yeah. breaking point. That's a show I can't wait to catch up on. Yeah, <laughs> like great show. It's uh that's one of the shows I saw like the first season, or whatever, and then just after that, I'm one of those. If I miss an episode or miss a season, I'd rather just wait till it's over to catch yeah, up. Yeah, on yeah, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying, and I see the spoilers and everything, and I've seen clips. You know, I've seen the man boy shit. I've seen uh. The look at his face. Like, I, I, I know all the iconic scenes and everything. Um, even stuff from this season, but it definitely looks like a good show. Yeah, I think much. season six has been definitely been elite so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, five, it had its little down moments, but it got back to its roots when a certain character got introduced. But I, I like the story they have been writing so far. Mm-hmm. Of course, they have their, their lapses. And no, I'm not saying, I would never say it's better than The Wire because that seems to always be a topic coming up yeah. and shit like that. Like, some of those conversations would be funny. Like, even the other day, they was asking, like, oh, who would you rather have, Franklin or Tariq? Mm-hmm. You know, Tariq from Power. Yeah, of course. And I was just like, come on, man. Like, that shit is not even comparable. It's but. funny with the, the wire and the uh, snowfall conversation. It feels almost like like in basketball where you, you might say, is this flashy player, like Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan in a way. Mm-hmm. Like, Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward of all time. Yeah. But Kevin Garnett might have been more enjoyable to watch. He yeah. might have had more. To Some play people say he better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And play. I feel like that about Snowfall. Even though I haven't watched it in its entirety, um, the the soundtrack, the the gun battles, of, like you don't see Avon really get busy like that. You know what I'm saying? No, that's what made oh the wire so authentic because yeah. they didn't really have no egregious killings. Right, right, right. They really kept it to like. Some realistic yeah. type shit even, going on. Even Brandon getting killed in the first season was you saw after the aftermath or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. um, yeah, Snowfall is just like I said. It's, it feels like Kevin Garnett's to me, and I haven't watched it, but Kevin Garnett still he, he might be the second greatest power forward of all time. The Snowfall yeah. could be that, but um, I'm gonna watch it. If, if I feel like it's better in the wire, I say it. That'd be my I'd thing. If I if I don't have a problem with saying something is better when time yeah. goes on, but I would have to see it. Yeah. And people, I think people just want to dethrone things so bad now. They do. They want to dethrone things Every, You know what it is, they too? Do. They do. It always goes back to basketball. I feel like people just want to protect their era. 
That's yeah. the biggest thing. For 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 Draymond Green to have four rings in this era and he lost one to LeBron and all these people been getting their ass whipped in the East Eastern Conference Invitational. Like they ha- even if they feel like there are people right now, I know they feel like Mike is better than LeBron all time. But because they played in this era and because people shit on him, they can't let him go out like that. They got to say he's this, he's that. They got to dethrone Mike. And I'm, I'm sure it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it's people who like feel like LeBron is better, but they have to hype Mike because they was getting their ass whooped by him. Mm-hmm. And 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 that and that's the era they know. That's what made them their money or whatever. Just like shows. People have to say, oh, I think Snowfall is better because this is my TV. You know what I'm saying? When I grow up, this is something I can tell my kids like, yo, Y'all don't know a good show until you watch X Y Z. So yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's still a good and show, and, and actually, R. P. to uh, I want to say his proper name, um, but the character who played Lieutenant Daniels. Oh uh, yeah, Lewis he, Reddick. Uh, I think that's his. Yeah, let me say. Yeah, Lance Reddick. Lance he Reddick. passed away. I, I mixed him up with yeah. him from ESPN. For, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, passed away sixty years old the other yeah. day, man. Good actor. R. P. to him. Yeah, good, good actor. actor. It's crazy how many like really good. Black actors we have out there, like he might be getting his roses now if he's gone. But and he from Baltimore. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was he was a really good actor. Good yeah, actor. RP to him, man. Um, to me, it's young, sixty years old. Yeah. So I don't know if he had any underlying health conditions. They didn't say. Nah, but um, yeah, man. So that means he would have been exactly forty when the wire came yep. out. Yeah. So Come it's on, man. yeah. So now we have him that's gone. Uh. Michael K. Williams. Michael K. Williams. Yeah. He's gone. So I, I always catch myself rewatching that show anyway. Yeah, though, all, the time. all the time. I'll, I'll wake up some nights, 12 o'clock, can't sleep. I'll put on an episode. Turn, yeah, turn on an episode, man. That shit is just quality TV. And, yeah. you know, for each season, they have a different theme, but it all mesh together so perfectly. And, like, even, like I said, I think even now, what I'm starting to notice with the trends of certain shows, I understand certain shows are going to be more gory than, or, uh, yeah. gory than others. But, like, I think they kind of get kind of caught up in the actual killing itself. Yeah. Like, it, that's one thing I say about the wild. Like, niggas in Baltimore ain't running around with no swords and shit, chopping niggas. Yeah, no. Like, when we saw Brandon's death, we yeah. didn't see Brandon's no, death. No. We just saw the after effects of what they did. The and most, I think that's what I appreciate about the show is, like, yeah. they showed certain things, but what somebody was capable of doing without exactly. actually showing it. Cause exactly. like, we didn't that shit like that they doing with Lamar on BMF yeah. is ridiculous, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I know. See, that's another show. Like, I see pizza. I know Lamar smoking crack now. Yeah. Like. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, BMF. I, I definitely catch up on that. I don't got stars, but I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, show. yeah, yeah. But, but they I, just taking it over the top, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that's like you said goes the the most gruesome thing. It wasn't even gruesome, but it was uh more like advanced. Some you don't think about. Was Snoop and Chris decaying the bodies with the line? Yeah. Outside of that, no, nah, not too much. Because outside of that, the only time we really saw what they was doing was the first one. Mm-hmm. Is when they actually shot him with the. They put the plastic bag up mm-hmm. and they shot him with the. Like, other than that, boss, all you yeah. did was seeing them boarding up the houses. Yep. yep. They wasn't doing like no torturings no, or nothing like that, like that shit. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. That shit. That shit was just on a different level, man. I think a lot of people. That's one. Some things are not comparable, and that could be okay, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. For that's sure. how I look at it. Some things just ain't comparable, and that's fine. I think, like you said, a lot of people are in the era now where, man, that shit, that shit fake. That shit yeah, went yeah. that how like no, we were actually there. We actually experienced it. This is what really like, happened. Who, what what beloved characters died on Snowfall? Like if 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 we talking about like Leon might have been dead in the wire. You know what I'm saying? Like actually, there hasn't been nobody who's died you in, see what in, I mean? in Snowfall I that was like beloved. And that's what I be telling His daddy died, but wire. his daddy was a he was a drunk. Yeah, he got back it, clean and he turned to a rat. Wire, your favorite character might have died. Yeah. He, like, there was not a lot of happy endings. We never saw Avon get released again. The end of the, one of the last scenes is We Bay welcoming Chris. They both got life, no parole. Like, it was very real. It was very real. Crazy how they had that was a great scene too because it was two niggas of the same cloth but up opposite yeah, yeah, yeah. sides of the spectrum like Barksdale yeah. versus had we Marlo. Been out at you the same what I'm time like we'd have been hunting for each other exactly but the now the we both do it the game is the game, game is the, the game. way they rounded out that show was just yeah. so perfect bro and i think you just can't i think if people honestly sat down I wasn't a big fan of season two until I actually rewatched it one time. I think it was a few years back, and I said, no, season two not only was probably the most important, but it was the biggest puzzle piece yeah. because it really spoke to the 
the foundational aspect of how shit really going. Like, of course, you see, oh, it it's, it surrounds the ports and all that, but mm-hmm. that's very important. That's very important. It's drugs. It's yeah. City, then like, they spoke you to you know the the white drug dealers, the Greek, the Greek the is Greeks. one of my favorite yeah. characters in TV because there are scenes you'll go back and somebody will walk by him in a diner or something like that, or and you're like, oh, that's the Greek, but that that's how real life is. You'll you'll look at a Live Five article in Charleston, somebody get bust with. 80 pounds of meth or heroin, and they look like somebody you might, yeah, that See, might yeah, ring Publix. you up in Dollar General. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and that's what it is. That's how it is. That's how that should be for real. And it, it's just, I think more so now, I think if they go into it with the mindset of, I want the legacy to be this, yeah. they'll be better off. For sure. Instead of actually trying to compare it to something yeah. that's already been happening before, because, no, I don't think a lot of shit can be duplicated, bro. That's no. just what it, it is. Bro. And, like, even when I say it, like, when I watch Breaking Bad, and I say it, like, to me, I truly believe Ozark is better than Breaking Bad. Yeah. That's my opinion. Mm-hmm. They are very close, so I'm not mad if somebody says Breaking Bad is better than Ozark, but I love that show so much Ozark and how around... Ozark was fucking fire. Ozark is and it's kind of like season two of The Wire, where getting through some of the boring parts or dry spots, you appreciate the beauty of the writing in the show. So, Man, that know? show had flawless writing. Really? Like yeah. o- Ozark had, and the way it ended, just for that whole shit to come back full circle as far as a family, like yep. for Noah, because we all didn't like Noah. No, yeah, he was op. He was, Noah was he a was, fucking <laughs> op, bro. Was, yeah. But for Noah to really just bring it full circle at the end, because dog was getting on my nerves. I'm he, not gonna yeah, lie. He was going against the family. Yeah, oh my god, that dude was getting. I'm like, Relax. dog, he's still here. So like, but for him to be the one to do it, it was yeah, it was a it perfect was very, fucking very, ending. And, like I said the other day, I'm gonna say this. Shout out to Wendy Bird, man. Yeah, Wendy man. Bird is one of the best character developments ever, bro. Like, she was hated in the beginning. She, she was, was hated in the beginning. but when you really analyze that character, she was the realest she was, one. She was solid. She was, solid. you know, how much shit she had to sacrifice and put to the side for the betterment of her family and keep the business going. I'm pretty sure she didn't want to have to let her brother go. She had to yeah, do it. Yeah, she had to. She, she had probably to. didn't want to end up leaving Chicago to do it, but she had to do it. Like her, I, I appreciate her mindset switching That's a when show. shit really got real. If I rewatch it, I got to watch certain episodes. Like I don't think I could watch it in full again because those, yeah, yeah. those dry spots are, they are what they are. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I can't say enough about it. Like you said, the brother getting killed. I just... We, I like good TV. Yeah, yeah. every everybody like loved TV. it. And like you said, another character that was loved, uh, the girl with the blonde hair. Oh, um, Ruth. Ruth. Everybody Ruth. loved fucking Ruth. Ruth dying was crazy. Though. Ruth dying was I, crazy. I couldn't believe that. I didn't think she was gonna get caught, but Me neither. It but, had got it had got way and, way too and thick that's for her. The realistic part about shows I like, just like I said, I love Prison Break as a show, but you knew they was gonna get out of a jail. You knew something good was gonna happen to them. I need to watch a show where your beloved character gets smoked, where the worst thing possible could happen to somebody. Sons of Anarchy was like that. I don't know if you watched that, but I like, watched the first two seasons. Yeah, Sons of Anarchy, like you, people love that show. It ended with the main character committing suicide, like planned, like shows like that. Um, definitely got a got a place in my heart, man. I TV. definitely fuck with it, man. Definitely fuck with that. It, it, and it's crazy because Roof was sickening as a motherfucker too, yeah. but it also spoke to. Certain things you're just not gonna escape because of your ego. Yeah. Like Ruth really had an ego she, problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when she killed dog, it was like, oh shit, the mom was wasn't it. gonna let that, that shit it, yeah. ride. Then when they had a the conversation at the casino, mm-hmm. that's when I knew it was done. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cause and that even, lady wasn't about to just even when she caught her thing, I was like, Oh, this is it. I was like, I might drag this death scene, but she's she's And a Wendy daughter. tried, Wendy and Mar and, 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 and Marty tried to save her countless times, mm-hmm. but it's like, what the fuck you want me to do? Yeah. What you want me to do? And I always appreciated how, uh, even with Marty's character development, they didn't ever get him to a point where he did some shit that really wasn't with them. That wasn't, Marty wasn't yeah. no fucking killer, no, no ruthless killer. No, he was killer. a strategist. Like, he was a strategist, that's how it exactly. All came, he lied. He lied. I can get me to those arc. You know what I'm saying? I can make this happen. Yeah. So. Hey, man, I fuck with it, man. Them niggas, them niggas, man, they got it together. But at the end of the day, Hey man, you gotta do what you you, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Mm-hmm. So I recently seen this conversation surrounding uh, San Francisco is uh, lobbying. I, it might be the state of California. I think it's San Francisco uh, lobbying yeah, for uh, like reparations. Mm-hmm. Remember the reparations uh, conversation? I can't remember the amount that it was though. But um, I seen conversations kind of be up and down as regards to the reparations payment. 
I would actually have to look up to see what the actual reparations payment is. It's exactly. funny that it's happening in California because Californians might be the most like criticized blacks. Why do you think that? That's it. Like just to their co- like, I know people like to put it on New York, but like in California, it's such a melting pot. Like anybody say nigga, a lot of them like. You hear black women who live in L.A. and Cali speak about their troubles finding like black men to love. Like there's a lot of interracial mixing and, and cultures and all that other stuff. It's just so interesting that that is them. Okay, so here yeah. it is. Uh, San Francisco Board of Supervisors has signaled they are ready to right racist wrongs of the past, at least in spirit. In a unanimous vote on Tuesday, the 11 members accepted a draft plan of more than 100 reparation recommendations for the city's eligible black residents. Those proposals include a whopping one-time payment of $5 million to each adult and a complete clearing of personal debt, including credit cards, taxes, and student loans. Black residents will also be able to collect an annual income of at least 97000 for 250 years and buy homes within the city limits for $1. Yeah, this was March 18, 2023. Yeah. Uh, we're not here today to say what recommendations will be supported on moving forward. There's still so much work that needs to be done. Um, To me, I feel like even with that statement alone, it's a dragging dragging the feet process. Because mm-hmm. I seen a tweet the other day, and this is real shit. We spoke about this before, about other races getting laws like at the drop of a dime with no yeah. problem. But what they tell us is, oh, vote for us, black people, and we'll... No, all, we'll all y'all tell us is vote. We'll get the we, y'all. I owe you. I'm know? done with that voting shit. <laughs> yeah, nah. I'm done with that voting shit. Yeah. The yeah. reparations thing has to get in full motion. And for like me also to, yeah. with California, like like I, I mentioned the other social stuff. And I wasn't saying like they should sure reward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like, I get what you were but saying. But it's just yeah, interesting yeah. that that's where it happens to uh that's what happened. But like you got you still got like sundown towns on this side of the country. Like that, this is not like hate, like reparations, jealousy, and not like that, but like of all the states that say, you know what, or cities, we're going to go ahead and do something. Like, you got towns in Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, whatever. Hate crime's been going on. And it starts with Cali. Uh, but, yeah, the whole other race is getting, you know, you can't you can't call an Asian person a C-word or whatever. That's a hate crime. They got stop Asian hate hotlines or whatnot. Like, being racist against black people is the most accepted form of racism out there. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. And all we get is, hey, vote for us and, yeah. you know, make Pass sure you get us in office. Racism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People, like, it could, could, could Biden, like, wear some, I don't know, uh, Chinese garb and go to a Chinatown and, and pretty much mock their, mock their, and yeah. get their vote? That's how no, I look at it. That's no. how I look at it. It'd yeah. be mocking. But he went. He went on Breakfast Club and said, "You're not black if you don't vote." Like that's embarrassing. Very embarrassing. I'll never be embarrassed to be black, but I hate that a lot of other people are. I hate a lot of other people being black. Uh, that shit, because it's shit that is accepted and it, and it shouldn't be. I don't think. I don't think at that moment we should have came out in waves, waves and voted for him the way that we did. But it just speaks to the continuous trend of. Mm-hmm. As long as y'all still continue to hold on to the form of voting with mm-hmm. nothing else, mm-hmm. that's what it'll always yeah. be. And nobody, because nobody can make me feel bad for not voting no more. No. Not a soul. Because no, 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 no. yeah, even I know people who 50, 60 who say, "Oh no, I'm not doing it." Now I'm thirty one years old, and I'm yeah, saying, I'm "Bro, that shit." I'm, I'm, I caught that shit. I, I'm hip to the game that's way old. earlier, bro. Like, no, because what are you giving me? Everybody else can get something. What can we get? And like something direct, like direct, yes, like, and with I tang- it. something tangible. And it's it's supposed to be the thing about like being black is funny that a lot of white people be like, oh, there's no white entertainment television. Why can why can uh what's her face, Kamala Harris? No, nah, n- not that. Uh, I'm not gonna say the word, but um, insecure. It's a oh, can Issa, get on Issa. the red yeah, carpet yeah. and say, oh, I'm rooting for everyone black because y'all say these things without saying it. it it's just it's known. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's known what y'all think about white quarterbacks or, or white cops or whatever else it is, it's known. Other people, there are laws to benefit other people that even if it's not said who is benefiting, we know what it is. So why is there a problem with just saying, here, there's this law that benefits black people? Mm-hmm. There have been laws to, to not benefit us? Well, a lot of them. So so, <laughs> let, so go out there and say, hey, this is what we're going to do for y'all. Mm-hmm. Let's make this happen for y'all. Vote for me in X, Y, Z. And I, not, I, I think we need to have it in motion before they actually get in. Exactly. That'd be my and, thing. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not saying give all of us $5 million, some shit, but yeah, give us give us all 800 credit scores. 
Give, wipe out our debt. Umar, Umar had a very good one. I think I had the video. It's a long video, but he had a real good plan because for me, it just can't be the money by itself. That's For them, that would be the easy part, mm-hmm. just giving money. No, percentages yeah. on certain shit. That's really where it's at. Land, land that was. I see some of, of a family who had some land in like San Diego, or some, some shit in LA, yeah. And they and ended re- up selling it or something like that. Yeah, I can't for remember like a one time payment or some shit I know like exactly that. What you talking about? Shit was crazy. Yeah, but some people, it. You know what I always say though. I understand both sides. It just depends on what side are you currently living in. Because somebody at that time can really need that X amount, whatever that is. They might not be willing to hold on to that for, yeah. say, 10, 15 down, years down the mm-hmm. line. It's worth this. Yeah. Due to the situation. Right. Can I be mad at them for that? No. Does it look a certain way for somebody? Yeah. yeah. But it all boils back to your situation at hand because, you know, somebody saying, man, I'll take 100K right now. Mm-hmm. For me, no. Nah. Yeah. But to them, that, nah. that might change their life. That shit might change their life. Mm-hmm. To me, reparations ain't worth a hundred k. I'm sorry, like no. I, I if you're gonna give me that, I need some shit that's a continuous payment for the rest of my life. That's gonna affect my my mm-hmm. nephew, probably my future kids, my kids' kids. That's what needs to be put in place. But when you just slap a dollar amount on something, that ain't really fixing yeah. the issue. Because it's like it's like fines in the NFL. You think finding a, a billionaire owner a million dollars doing it? You know what I look at it as. When Scotty Pippen signed a seven year deal in 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with the J. Ron, so we saw it in and he's yeah. like, bro, don't come to me. Yeah. You signed, this is what you signed for. He was telling them don't sign that. And that's, that's what the government would tell us as black people. Like, no, we gave you this payment in 2023. Mm-hmm. You can't come to us now in and 2040 complain, and say, like, no, no, that's not how that shit worked, bro. Like, no. That shit wild, bro. We cannot do that. Like, uh uh-uh. uh. Sorry. Bro, they need to get them reparations rolling, man. Reparations <laughs> laws. <laughs> A lot of shit. <laughs> we need that shit put in motion, exactly. man. But hopefully, I, I always say, I'm thinking, because I always think from a realistic aspect, there's something that I don't never see getting put in motion. But I, I, I just kind of still hold out hope sometimes that yeah, yeah. eventually it could come. It, because it's something that we need and we're owed that. Mm-hmm. We definitely owe that. And it would it would solve a lot of issues within the black community, I think. Especially when, if, especially if it's not just money. Like, if it's something else poverty, that, that's attached to it, yeah. because poverty is just not in the forms of money neither. No, you know what I'm right. saying? Like, it could come in access to certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, certain land or, you know, building opportunities and shit like that. I just see some shit Health. the other day. Atlanta got, like, a little, like, basically, like, a neighborhood or something. It's just all black people, and they're building up all these, like, little yeah, homes just, and yeah, shit. Yeah, you saw yeah, that yeah. shit? Look like some dope shit. Because I'm not against, like, us just having our own, like, our own little towns. Like, hey, white people have been doing this since the beginning of the t- time. And then when we came along, it was like, oh, nigga, you can't if, be here. We're going to kill your ass. If if equal resources were given, oh, nobody man. would have an issue with segregation. That was the big That's, That'd be my that thing. Was the, thing. Segre- the problem wasn't, oh, we want our kids that, nah, uh, we still here's, segregate here's, ourselves. W- Give us the same books. Give us the same quality, whatever else it is. I, why, are, why are our seats in the theater got to be... Up and down. Why can't we be left and right? You know what I'm saying? They just wanted equal resources. Made Here's my thing. When I look at the world, because the world is big as fuck, and I think people really underestimate how big the world is. Right. Like I think even like you taking a flight, for example, right, and you really get to see the Earth, and you be seeing it like in squares and yeah. shit, right? I remember but, the first time realizing a map is really the map. Yeah, but people be thinking about certain things. I think because when you live in around a, like a, a rural area or even let's say a mm-hmm. city, right, mm-hmm. where people be, all right, where's the closest shopping center, groceries. Job opportunities, mall, right? Yeah. But dog, people would be like, "Well, why you won't go build here?" Because they don't have specifically those things. But it's a lot of fucking land on this yeah, earth. Yeah. We ain't getting no more now. But it's a lot of yeah. land on this earth. And like you said, I don't think people would be having. I I don't. I wouldn't have an issue with it. Now that's not for me to say. I want to enjoy certain settings with different groups of people. No. Yeah, no yeah. But when it comes to the actual settings and like the neighborhoods, Comforts, looking at the yeah. comfortability. I don't think a lot of people will be against that shit for real, there bro. There was a stat I read that, like, even with uh, Hispanic folks, like, just like white folks, most of, most of them, their ideal neighborhood wouldn't include black people. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah. And I don't think there's nothing wrong with it's that. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and as long like, as you're not harming certain yeah. groups of people, bro, I don't care what you th- just because I don't like to be around white people means I'm not against uh, means I'm not against y'all. I have my own feelings about how we was treated and how continuously we treated today. That mm-hmm. don't mean I want to see y'all die off. Exactly. I just yeah. rock with my people more than exactly. I rock with y'all. You see, so and that's you just might what call it is. HOA on me for my black neighbor would understand it's not harmful. You it's know what I'm saying? Harmful. Yes, like exactly. That. Yes. So I, I think when you have the equal resources, which I feel is a long, 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 long way away, mm-hmm. I think shit would be better off, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Cause at the end of the day, where the big, like you know, they say the, the the word project came from an actual experiment. This all the world is really like a big project. It yeah. really is a if you think you know how they always be doing like the case studies and shit? Yeah. yeah. We're actually living a case, case study, study yeah. bro. That they'll they'll go back and like how we do history now with history books. All that shit that was going on is a case study because, you know, it, it shed light on the, the mental of, of a black man going to Vietnam in 1970. Right. That is technically a case study. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't, you didn't have that conversation in that time because, like, nigga, you're going to go to war. You're going to come home and it is what it is. Yeah. You don't really get to have that conversation about how that shit weighed on them and not only living in a racist country, having to go f- fight somebody else's war come back. and come back. And I don't get shit. Yeah. But maybe a drug addiction. That's it. Get get mistreated when I come back, but the yeah. whole with like even today, like the whole world is nothing but a fucking case study. Like social media is gonna be an era in history that they're gonna oh, cover in history. Social media has had one of the biggest impacts on on society. As but a but whole. you know what's so wild, bro? And I and I've been consistent on this the whole social media thing because when you say social media, people automatically attach a negative mm-hmm. connotation to it. Mm-hmm. For me. I lean more towards the positive side yeah, yeah. because you know what to me. That's what's the impact. It's the people that control what's going on in social media. It's right. not social media itself. It's the people. Mm-hmm. If you just had the app stand alone, the app stands alone. It's the people who post certain things and create certain narratives. Right. So for me, social media has um, connected me with great people, given me certain opportunities in certain fields. It could have been somebody. I remember shout out my boy Twan. Twan saw me off a retweet of a pod. So, oh shit, I fuck with these niggas. Yeah. But on me on this platform. So I look at the positives more so of social media, more so than the negatives. Because if you're a good upstanding individual, you're not gonna succumb to that shit. Right. And the people who are, they'll, they'll just fall anyway, probably. They'll fall to that shit anyway. So for me, I, I always take away the positives of social media. You see what I'm saying? And I understand. There is the other side of it, but it just boils down to as you get older, you know how to condition your mindset and how to maneuver through this app with the bullshit. Mm-hmm. So, like for us, me and you, me and you had conversations, but no, we're not ever going to indulge on a TL with some of that bullshit that we be seeing, bro, because yeah, it's nah. stupid and it's counterproductive anyway. Yeah. It's plain and simple. I mean, um, yeah, social media, it just brings out more who people are. Like you said, it's a yeah. standalone app. It's, it's the people on there and- their benefits, their benefits, their flaws, but it, 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 the same way you said, you know, we are a map and things are a case study. Social media like amplifies all that. You see what people believe. You see what I like every now and again looking, scrolling a tweet uh-huh. that totally differs from my opinion and seeing like, wow, this subtle but not subtle racist tweet got two thousand retweets and ten thousand <laughs> likes from a reply. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's so it's so crazy. I, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's also the uh, the the new feature is not at Elon. It's just he rolling all type of the. Uh, not only that, I, the for you tab has always been there, but it wasn't on the actual yeah, yeah. time. It it now wasn't it's a switch over. And shit. Yeah. It's like a split screen type shit. Like you can either switch now. It used to just be an option where you could just hit the home. Mm-hmm. It used to be home versus latest like tweets. Content preferences or some shit. Yeah. Like that. yeah. The uh, seeing how many people saw this tweet. You know how they have that feature now, mm-hmm. like the little stat that shows. Yeah, it's views, not a retweet or like that, yeah. it just shows a view. Now they have the bookmark thing yeah, and people yeah. run it. But the views say because that could play on people mental too. Not exactly. oh, five hundred people saw my tweet but didn't like they it or like retweet it. Right. it. Yeah. So now that plays on somebody mental. Like oh man, people ain't really fucking with me. Huh? Even with the bookmark shit, spider. Yeah. Yeah. Little baby spider. You good, I don't flip the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. No, you good. Gotta, gotta but um, but um, yeah, nah, that the whole uh, view thing. Even the other day when they reveal who's. What what? How many times something's been bookmarked? Like, how far are we going? Man? Yeah, like, it's so they, I think they doing that on purpose about. to play yeah. on people mental, yeah, bro. Yeah. I think it's that's what it is. Lab coats, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, you see, everybody's been joking about it, but women like, oh my god, why why does this tweet of me in my thong, you know, just covering my titties? Why why does this have 300 bookmarks? Like, you know, why I got that many 
fucking bookmarks. Like <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ain't nobody appreciative of your tattoo artist's work. <laughs> the certain poses that they do, and you yeah, gonna ask that like, question. Like, come on, man. I don't know what the fuck going on. That shit wild. That shit wild. But to get into some more funny shit, man, I seen this shit this morning. Bro, Lars Pippa said, Lars Pippa said she had sex four times a day for 23 years with Scottie Pippa. Hey, man, nigga better than me. I think she kind of capping, but it could be so. It, it could. It, I'm gonna take her word for it. I was listen. Listen. Let, let, let me just say. I just uh, got that many carries in me. You know what I'm saying? Let's just, let's just say uh, I take her word for it. I can possibly see why she's moving the way that she moves. Yeah, bro. need a young dude. Bro, she, with. You know, four times a day with four the same person. Ridiculous. At, at night, night, yeah, no like no way. Nah, she didn't say day. She said four times a night. That's specific. Said she used to take private planes for the dick. Hey, God. <laughs> I just ain't got anything. Scotty is a madman, bro. Yeah, he's he a madman. <laughs> you just got on game game six, nigga. And you gotta yeah. go throw he root. Needed, he needed th- four uh, times after a, a crazy game. Okay, he needed a therapist to Tiger Woods. Had. So let's just say <laughs> a week, right? Let's just say a week, four times a night. By the time the third week of the month rolls around, I'm done with you. I need some new pussy. She was prop. They were probably uh, cheating on each other the whole time. What? There's what, no wait. way you're having sex four times a night with one person, and that relationship is healthy. When you, I like when I'm I sorry. see memes and tweets, and people are like, "Oh, I can't wait to move in with somebody and be smacking their ass and fucking all day. that." Okay. That shit ain't like that. It, it just isn't. I don't care how attractive and attracted you are to your significant other. Shit gets stale, especially if you're not. Tr- if, if, if you gotta space it out, yeah, bro. You, you gotta, gotta space, space it out. out. You gotta space it the spice fuck it out. Up. So spice whatever it up. that may be, like, like by the end of that, they might have been dressing like, uh, like Uncle Elroy and Sugar. And next Friday, like, <laughs> you not, you not just hitting, hitting with the f- same five positions for for however long they was married four times. Fuck out of here. Hell no. I can't eat Chick Fil A three times a week. No way. Week. You know what I'm saying? I gotta space Monday, it out. Wednesday. Saturday, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of people laugh time. at those comparisons, but that's some real shit. Like yeah. my nigga, some days I'm I might want a, some cereal today. Yeah, that don't mean I want pancakes, waffles, egg, the full course breakfast every single day. Yeah. I might just need me a little quick, just you know? Some, yeah, yeah. I might, might fuck around get a granola bar, and that and that's funny because when you have people who talk about like, oh my uh, my significant other is, isn't interested in me no more, it's like, all right, you say y'all fuck all the time. What are you trying new? Did you did you put up like did you change your hair around? Did you you know what I'm saying? Are you your perfumes different? Like yeah. all of that shit plays a role. Some of that little shit matters. Some of that bro. shit matters. I think uh, yeah, like even with the hair, the hair yeah. shit, right? I never like nitpick about no woman's hair at all. Right. But I know me dealing with woman. A woman switching up her hairstyle can make you kind of be like, damn, yeah, like, I like fuck feel, with yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's in a, like, sex is reciprocal, and it's appreciation. It's appreciation, you know yeah, yeah, if yeah. If you've ever had, like, if you got a, a fuck buddy or somebody you're you, you not getting in-house whatever with, you know what I'm saying, you go see them every so often. If a chick is shaved now, or she come, you come over, she got a different perfume or scent on, that shit is appreciative. You, yeah. You're like, I fuck with that. I'm going to leave it all on the court tonight for her. She yeah. getting a triple-double. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's Yeah, like you said, that's probably why she's moving like she is now. It probably got to a point where it was just oh man, she's, routine. Yeah. Routine. And, and let's be real. Like, a lot of women aren't open to being criticized about sex either. So, he may, like I said, he may have been moving differently. He may not have been all the way into it, but four times a fucking lot. Four times a week. Or four times a night. <laughs> Four times a night. Fuck out of here. I mean, I can see like two rounds a night. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like four is. I'm on a jigger, nigga. Like yeah, you know yeah. I'm he, like, he I got had, has to, had be to. On something, dog. He had to be chopping a Cialis with a My Costco dog, card or something. Nigga on the fucking <laughs> the gas station, get that horny rhino. <laughs> something. <laughs> something. <laughs> Word, That's crazy. Dog. For real. And you can even mutually agree, like, yo, we're gonna chill till next week. Four times a night. I don't know. She probably capping about some yeah, of that, yeah, yeah. but it's. Regardless, it's a lot. It's, of sex. it's a lot of sex. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot of sex. It's a lot of sex when it comes to her. Yeah, dog. I'm gonna want new pussy. I'm sorry. How yeah. old is she? Full. God, Lars got to be tapping fifty. Yeah, definitely. Because she with Marcus now. He was he around my age. No, he's not that young. Marcus? He's he has to be at least thirty six. Yeah, he's six. Marcus thirty two. No, oh, he's thirty two. We the same age. Marcus thirty two. Lars forty eight. Forty eight. Okay. 
That makes a lot of sense. That says a lot about Scotty too, because road games and all that shit, like yeah, that's what I'm that says a lot about. Out. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's crazy. He might right. have a sex addiction. Probably. Well. I think more people have it than they think. Uh, maybe it's yeah. her that has the sex addiction. You see what I'm saying? It Not the way that she was speaking. She was speaking she that- She made it seem like it was him and this shit. It was him. Her. She made it seem like it was him. It didn't seem like it was something that it, was enjoyable on her end. But it's also probably, you got to look at her. You know what I'm saying? Like, he has to do this shit to keep his, you know, keep her yeah, happy. Yeah, he probably could have like, thought that's what, you know. It's a lot of like, stress on him. Which is another thing. I don't think a lot of people know, like- do you naturally have a high sex drive or do you just feel pressured to be this way? You know what I'm saying? I don't think too many people know about it. I can say a lot. These stigmas around sex is so crazy that people force themselves into certain shit. Right. They you do. Know? Yeah, you they know, do. There are women who tell a man he's scared of pussy, so he he hit. He wasn't attracted to it. He just didn't want anything. He was scared of pussy. Like, right. no shit like that. So, yeah, that they, he got to get his married. mental up. But, yeah. His mental probably, up to get ready. Yeah. And then you got to think, too, basketball wives, they, they're, they're friends with some of the other wives on the team. She might he might have knew like you know he had practice and BJ Armstrong telling him how he be going eight times a night he like oh yeah I gotta keep up my wife yeah. there's a lot of pressure who knows that's some crazy shit. yeah I, I think it's kind of like to keep her in line to make sure yeah. like she ain't fucking off because yeah. her her sex drive is that high and he is on the road a lot yeah. you know what yeah. I mean like that makes sense yo I'm just <laughs> leave her with something. might be yeah. it might be yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying like I'm my mental's not gonna be cool knowing that I'm at this game and. Right. I'm not gonna make Only it home. Gave her two rounds but. today. <laughs> <laughs> she was asking right. Joe, the neighbor, about his All mango right. habanero barbecue yeah, sauce. Yeah, bro, because to be real, bro, right. if you're if you're a working couple, bro, mm-hmm. and I've been I've had those stretches, like you might have those stretches of two weeks where y'all might not have did nothing, or yeah. three weeks you might not have did nothing, bro, and. But if you if you have it to where you're not having to worry about anything financially, which of course they didn't have nothing mm-hmm. to worry about, and you have the access to travel, mm-hmm. I can see that being a thing. But also, is that sustainable as far as how I look at you that want? Right. Because yeah. I'm I'm a big I'm big on visual yeah. for me. So I've always stood on if you don't got that thing that make me want to like mm-hmm. jump on you, yeah. I know it's not gonna work. I know yeah, that about yeah, myself. Yeah. Like I have to be sexually attracted to you. For me to even be there for one, yeah. Then for two, if we having sex that much, it's like, bro, that shit going to die all quick. But we gotta like, yeah. or like Jordan say, you spice it up. Yeah. What's her race? Yeah, man, Larsa, man, I know she ain't fully black. That's all yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know she a little. Because I mean, you look at the picture back in the day. She could be Hispanic. She's been a little like exotic that. looking thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, her mother's Lebanese. Her father's uh, Syrian. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, she she exotic. <laughs> She's on it. So Scotty, you talking, you know, back then. Yeah, I feel that. I got a little spicy little thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. I can see him frying the thing out, paying the fee, because I'm sure she's wild. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm yeah. sure she was the the aggressor in the bedroom. She gives that vibe, and even still to this day, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. She gives that that wild sex appeal. Oh yeah. So I I mean I I can believe it. Four probably, but four times is mad. Four times crazy. Yeah, that's nuts, bro. Shout out to Scotty, though. I've been you know? whispering motivational speeches to my equipment, bro. Like, he just <laughs> Four times? Are you serious? Yeah. The nigga I probably definitely popping a pill. Yeah. Uh, for sure, ain't no way. You done been getting elbowed by Carl Malone Come on now. seven times Come on. 36 minutes. You done cut up on Spike Lee, nigga. Yeah, now you going like, four rounds? That's... Like... <laughs> 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 like, that's crazy, though. Legend in two games, I guess. <laughs> Don't let it happen a two or triple overtime game. All right. Bro. Like that, I gotta hurry up, man. My yeah. shorty, she she ain't gonna be waiting all night. So you talking like you leaving? That turnaround is crazy, yeah. though. Like come that on, turnaround man. is crazy. That's yeah, crazy. Is. Like the so, energy, the energy. You right. leaving the you leaving the stadium at like one two a.m. You still gotta eat. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. It was like, apparently four times a night, but. <laughs> But it was probably mutual pressure. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like I said, she know who around him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, he Dennis Rodman teammate? Oh, I'm pretty right. sure it's some hoes around. You know? Yeah. yeah. Like, that's... That play yeah. on their mental, too, because I remember when Lala and Carmelo had their show, and Lala was speaking about the pressures of her sexuality. Mm. Like, constantly staying attracted to Mel because he was on the road. That's how she used to say it. Like, you know, FaceTime and, like, putting on certain shit because, you know, he is on the road. And, you know, she got to find time. To like have sex with her husband, like mm-hmm. I remember that was a big thing with Tia and her ex uh, mm-hmm. when they was together at the time. Like they usually had to had to schedule sex due to both of their schedules being so hectic, uh, mm-hmm. which I can understand. But like the basketball wise, football wise, like you know that that mental of them 
like constantly having to stay sexually attracted to their husband yeah. because they either subcon even though they may trust him subconsciously, they thinking like I know when he step off that bus and go to the hotel in mm -hmm. such and such city, it's gonna be thrown at him. Yeah. You see yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's a real thing. That could that could be stressful yeah. on them yeah. for real. Yeah. It can even, be. Even if they're turning it down, like just just seeing that, like seeing it, no way to fuck with them. Nothing is scarier to somebody than knowing who their significant other can pull. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm pretty sure if Lala was like, "Oh, word, blank threw it at you." Oh, I yeah, I definitely gotta go get my hair done or whatever. Nah, I thanks. definitely gotta do X, Y, Z. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. Four times. Yeah, that's four times a night, bro. Nah, how cool? That's cool. madness. Cool. That's, that's crazy. Uh -uh. Uh -uh, that's crazy. Every day? No, sir. Uh, uh. I gotta step my game up, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta step my game up. Jeez. I don't think you can even mentally prep yourself. Like you had, you would need so much. This I'm speaking for me. I know I'm gonna get tired of that shit. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, well, like yeah. the miss. I think is it's still the you have to have that missing factor. Like yes. I, I need to I have want to miss, to miss you, you. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah, yeah. I know that you're gonna like again. I I just like you said. Get back, Carl Malone just fucking rough me up, pause. You know what I'm saying? Like, I gotta like I, I'm tired. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, like roll over just. <laughs> Just to know that shit, like, damn, I still have to go four rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this shit, and like, that and that ex that expedites the the separation because if it's that much, that's clearly a big part of your relationship. Yeah. So when it finally did get tired, like, damn, oh, I didn't even know you liked the yeah. young wrestlers. So I'm not watching this with you. So I mean, twenty twenty three years. I mean, nigga got tired. That's yeah, what it sounds yeah. like. Twenty three. You know exactly. Being with somebody twenty three years period is a long time. Yeah. Man. Very commendable though, but being some so. The sex has to be, you have to have the missing factor. Yeah. I've always said that. Even if we not have a sex like, if we just up on each other every single day, I, I want to have an I miss you factor. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, I do want to have that because yeah. if this shit is going to get consistent, and I'm not saying you're going to lose, but it's just going to be like, damn, bro, like, but see, go to the grocery store for 10 hours or something. But how yeah. do, but, <laughs> but see, that's the thing. Like, how do you, like, I guess the missing factor is like, you know, marriage, okay, just for example, like this that's very kind of hard to miss your wife or spouse unless you're at work a lot, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, but even, and I'm guessing like working like that, like an average job, of course, you know, he's a basketball player, nigga only playing basketball, does practice, eat, sleep, whatever, yeah. or weightlifting, shit like that. So his schedule is way different from the average nigga, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Um, but for average, like us, you know what I'm saying, just to say like, for me to get to that level to, you know, one, to say, you know, it's a lot to lead up to wanting to marry a woman, but still having that um, missing factor, because I can speak to you because you're married. Yeah. How, do you have a way to where, like, certain little things, you'd be like, yo, I miss my wife today. You we know got what different I mean? rooms. Okay. <laughs> so we got two bedrooms. I, I kind of got, like, the man cave I'm in most of the time, mm -hmm. my recliner, and in the bedroom. We both sleep in the same mm -hmm. room together, but, like, that's her, like, I got some T-shirts in the closet, but, like, all her, like, fandoms and shit yeah. and like she got her stuff in there her bags and everything so really just that but um it's more so different things like we don't eat the same places all the time mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like i i love t-bones i love fridays i like longhorn a couple restaurants we we stay away from those intentionally or whatever but just in terms of in the house yeah like we around each other but we're not around each other too much gotcha we work i work like tomorrow I'll work eleven to eight, she'll work nine to five. Yeah. So I'm gonna miss her. Yeah. By the time I get home, there's a little bit of time for us to hang out. So our work schedule does that and then the house dynamic. Yeah. But at the same time, like I joke and say, we like an old couple. Mm. We only twenty eight. We we've been together since we were sixteen. Okay. She's been with me through like both my grandparents' funerals. Yeah. She was in a limo with me, like her yeah. and my mother. Her and my mother be gossiping about shit. I'd be like, I ain't talking about mother in two days. Right. Her, you know what I'm saying? So we we real close. We like old people. I'll be in the room. She'll come by and call me ugly or some stupid shit like that. I'll walk in, see her watching some, and pick on her and go about my business. Mm -hmm. But we in the same house. Like mm -hmm. I think a lot of a lot of like the common married man and and Patrice O'Neill said this in the stand up. We want you like around, but not like on top of each other, mm -hmm. and that helps. Like over there, like yeah. an event. Because I let the <laughs> fuck out my wife. Like I'm like like I'm six o'clock in the morning. Cuddling my wife, kissing on the forehead till she got pushed me away. Mm. I'm like yeah, mockingly yeah. smelling her so she know I, I like your natural scent and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But we not. I'm off today. When I go home after this, I'm going to go to the gym, come home, take a shower, whatever. 
we'll cuddle and all that, but that's not every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have sex on a Monday. We might have it again on a on a Wednesday or th- whatever. You know, but it's just not. It's knowing to pace yourself. When yeah, we yeah, was yeah. younger and we first moved in together. Oh ah. man, oh man. I feel it's you. Like, bad yeah, man. We, we <laughs> definitely had to. Yeah, I definitely had to uh, experiment with different bed frames and whatnot a couple of times. <laughs> getting it in, but you have to create Cheers. that space. You have to. You gotta you have create to the have space. a man cave, or you gotta. She gotta go out and do X Y Z. Y'all mm. just have to have separate lives, but yeah. together. That's one thing, like I was, like I noticed in like my best friend Tunde, of course, but him, like seeing him and Devin's, you know, relationship and see them building up, but to see like, like they'll have their mom, mom and pop night. Mm-hmm. That's you know the date night and stuff. And this is even before the kids, you know what I'm saying? But also it'll be like she'll have her girls night, and we got the guys night. You know what I mean? She goes on her girls trips, yeah. we got our guys trips. You see what I'm saying? Like to see that because I I see it firsthand in my in my bro. So it's like. I see exactly what you mean, but just speaking for somebody who, you know, say they live in a one bedroom apartment yeah. and it's kind of hard not yeah. to be able to separate that too. You know what I mean? Stuff like that is something that, you know, having, and, getting outdoors and going to hang out with the fellas yeah. and stuff like that. But it's also the communication thing. Yeah, Don't and, be goofy with it. Like right. you in the club, but you saying you're going to play video games. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And like, that's where like just being, your partner is really your partner. Right. You know what I'm saying? As this is a, Y'all team and everything. Y'all gotta have these conversations. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like you, like if you if you annoy with your girl or your man, your man ain't doing something right. You gotta tell him. You have to. Like I've told my wife before. Like, hey, we we went crazy. We went to New York for our anniversary last year. Fiftieth mm-hmm. floor downtown Manhattan. Beautiful views now. Beautiful views. Trust me, I know. Like, like <laughs> yeah, we was we was. We, shout out to my man Rich. Rich gave me some edibles, and my wife ain't know what they were. She ate two packs. She was gone the whole day. She, Damn. My wife's like, I'm never doing drugs again. But um, we was wilding. When we got back, we wasn't gonna fuck for that for and and like we said this on the flight back, like or like we got we landed. We was like, yo, you know, we kind of chilling. She's like, yeah, like we did, we did it. Yeah. We was having sex with with green neon lights. Ah. You know, to eat some expensive restaurants. Right. Yeah, from, you know, World Trade Center across the street, yeah. all that type of shit. We gonna chill out for a week and then might get back to it or whatever, yeah. and you know. But yeah, you just gotta have that conversation. You gotta be able to tell your girl like, I like when you have braids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> My wife just got her braids, and I've been like on her neck about it since she had it. Like yeah. this morning, I was like, I forgot you had them. You had the bonnet on. But like, you have to tell her. You gotta tell your man, yo, you've been on me too much. Like, go play your game. And it's not like I don't like you, but make sure they know it's cool to have that space because a lot of people don't know how to be together. Yeah. Just like I said, those memes. There are people that, like, somebody will ask me, like, yo, do you and your wife do? I'm like, no, nah, we, don't, we don't fuck all the time. And they'd be like, oh, that's so crazy. I thought all people did that. Well, why did you think that? Right. Did your parents fuck all the time? Yeah. They, you know, it's people who did Because even with girlfriends, you don't fuck all the time. Yeah, no, you don't do you that. Don't so people are living off of stigmas, and you just got you to gotta be able to. Yeah. It's, it's times me. I'm, hey, you trying to? No? All right, cool. Yeah. And we go back to watching Abbott Elementary yeah. or some bullshit. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. So you just got to be able to be up front and be transparent yeah. and just know. Mm-hmm. Be secure. Know that if your girl don't want to fuck you, she probably not cheating or whatever. She probably yeah, just, just, just like you. Yeah. She want to miss it. Mm-hmm. That's all. I'm trying to chop every night, but not four yeah, times a night. Four times. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, if you ain't know your lady, you know. Or some variation. Yeah. Sometimes your man just might want to head. Lady, yeah. sometimes your, your girl just might want to get out. You know, you can do. There, sex is a is a whole thing. It's a, it's a what you call it? Shit. You got different layers. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different layers of sex. You can. Y'all can be intimate without it having to go there. You can Facts. massage her. You can, y'all can lay, cuddle, you know. You can blow up a kiddie pool, yeah. pour a baby oil in it. You exactly. Know what I'm saying? Do whatever, you know what I'm saying? Do whatever. Yeah. Whatever's your, you know. Feed her some salmon like these niggas on TikTok. Whatever. Ah. <laughs> but, yo, that should be wild, bro. Hey, yo, like these, 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 these over erotic chefs. Yo, <laughs> chefs chill is the going, fuck like, out with this honey, bro. Like they yeah. gotta chill with this yeah, honey. Yeah, now nah, this yeah, shit yeah. looks. Crazy, but then they be like dripping and like flicking their tongue and shit. Yeah. Like, bro, what is going on? Though? A slice of salmon, bro. Like, right. like for real. Yeah, you bro. need to be on that list for real. I can see why Mike ain't fucking with seafood. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> these niggas doing shit like this, dog. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't doing this shit with burgers, yeah. bro. Bro, <laughs> niggas, is, niggas is getting the, the sauce or whatever squirted in their mouth at the come table on, and all man. type of like, shit. Come on, be, a, be a man. Like, come on, bro. Then the women they get in the shit like. Bro, what are we doing? We here to eat food. This is not no triple X erotic and then salmon. It'd be, it be somewhere. It's like women, like really, like they got their phones out. It's ten of them. The chef slide the knife across the, ooh, taking pictures and shit. Like 
They know what they doing. You they rubbing it a certain yeah, way like, with the two fingers like, and all. On, I'm like, all right, bro. Like, this is what we doing. Gordon like, no, bro, bro, I came here fingers. to eat. Yes. Yeah. I didn't come here to watch food porn, my nigga. Yes. Like, yo. <laughs> yes, yeah. you did. No, bro. <laughs> Hashtag food like, porn relax. used to mean something different. Fact. It used to mean something. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Something. Plate now they making it like the actual thing. Like, my nigga, you over here, you fingering turkeys and salmon and all type they of shit. They got escape like, plan in the background. Like, bro, what is... Do like lovers do playing and you Niggas know now Marion on his verses and shit, dog. Yeah. Like, the watermelon <laughs> shit. Right, yeah, dog. it's like, some, some wild, shit. bro. Yeah. Y'all niggas need to lock it off, man. Relax, man. It's okay. Just, just food. eat the fucking food. Eat bro. the food, <laughs> man. Put in some cornmeal, toss it. Just eat the fucking food, dog. Just niggas. eat the food. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Y'all try to chop and do all that crazy shit. Do that shit, yeah. but leave the food out of it, dog. Like, just... <laughs> It's crazy, man. I, I honestly I couldn't do it. You know what I'm no. saying? Like I'm not trying to see a sex show of food and then go home full and be like, yeah, I'm going yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, no. I'm I got cool these fucking that. horny rhino packets yeah. in my food. <laughs> <laughs> that shit the, crazy. The honey dog. pack epidemic is crazy. It's not. It all is. Of it. Like, all it is. It's just another form of all the other shit that's been going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. But see, this is y'all the niggas got to be careful with that shit. Don't stop man. playing around that. now because when you get to a certain age. Your shit ain't going to work. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm trying to tell y'all, if you work out, your stamina will build up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Naturally. But if you want to be, you know, whatever, you don't want to fucking do nothing, cool. But yeah. leave the fucking Everybody pills, knows. the packets, all that shit alone. See, you going to be on Cialis. Yeah. All the commercials, they talking to y'all. Them niggas putting them packets and shit, they yeah. talking to y'all because it's a real thing. And the, the fucked up part is like, you got like the ashwagandha and the... Or however Kevin Gates said it, you got the actual gun in the, in the Maca craze, and I'm like, y'all so yes. horny, y'all forget Mac and actual. It's good for energy and, and all it's that other stuff. Supposed to, yeah, yeah. Like people would be like, oh yeah, I'm off this. I, I'm gonna get pregnant tonight, but like, yeah, but you. You're not gonna talk about how you slept for six hours and you feel like you slept for twelve. You're not gonna All talk right. about your anxiety. Oh, that low. shit. That that is supposed to be a natural thing. So like, I know my body, right? Mm-hmm. So I know because I've been in these certain situations, and women look at me crazy, like. Nigga, like, are you no, this is how my body naturally is yeah, because, yeah. like Drew said, when you when you work out, you're supposed to. You eat certain. I remember Styles P. I remember I, I had a tweet about it that kind of got some retweets off of it. And he was talking about, like, how you eat, too, also yeah. can affect your sex drive. Mm-hmm. And he said, why you think it's so many young cats out here? For one, they do it because either they want to and on top of what they're doing and they factor in their age. It's like, why you these young dudes, young, strong, black, African, mm-hmm. like, dudes... Off the rhino pills, oh, blow her back out 3,000. Yeah, it's because yeah, of like, yeah, yeah. all that shit is blood flow. Yep. So if you need assistance with that, my nigga, you, you might need to go talk to somebody about that shit, bro. Like, no, because that shit is not supposed that to be should, like that. That should not be regular, though. It's, especially not in your 20s. Come on, now. What are we but talking? these niggas laugh about that shit. And yeah. I'm like, bro, that's not nothing, that that's not not nothing funny. funny to laugh two at. Two summers ago, I was at my heavy, so I was probably 330. Last summer, I was like, I don't know. I probably I gained some more because I... Uh, it's been muscle really, but I had a leg injury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. I remember like, you talking about that. I was at like two fifty, like mm-hmm. the lowest side. And you I see was a like difference in and your body I performance. Was like Wesley Piping, like, right. like I was. Like I was. She was like, "Nigga, what is this? What uh-huh. has gotten into you again?" Uh-huh. Like it was, and I saw. I was like, "It's just my work. diet. I was eating better. I was, I was going to work. Just Energized. I stopped to work and get." Four plums and some grapes and stuff. Yeah, all that shit matters. All that, like I I was, uh, I spoke about uh, black seed oil yesterday, Mm -hmm. and I was telling because I've been on black seed oil probably I think a little bit after the pandemic, so going on about two three years. I take black seed oil, the capsules every day. I take elderberry every day, and I even notice about I always pretty much had a strong immune system, but also before that it was me working out. Mm -hmm. So when I started working out, like. Kicking up consistently five, six straight, seven years. Yeah. Those seasonal colds wasn't yeah, happening yeah, no yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even now, like even with certain shit, like I could be around somebody who might have a cold, and like be right and direct, and I'm not gonna get that shit. Same. So all that shit plays into a factor, like you know, me taking the black seal, the elderberry every day. Then on top of uh, how you eat, the working out shit. Mm-hmm. You don't got to do nothing too crazy. Yeah. But if you're ever getting to a point, especially fellas, if you're in your twenties, bro, and you feel the need to be off this because you know this is what the no, bro, you're not and, supposed to be that. You're naturally side, supposed to yeah, be like and on that. On the flip side, seeing how women expect, like women be like, oh yeah, this nigga off a of perk, he gonna do this to me. He off the honey pad. Like, why are you looking forward <laughs> to men being off these enhancements to do that? Like, no facts. That's, yeah, facts. That's crazy. That's, I feel bad for them. You know what I'm yeah. and, and the funny part about it, not the funny part, but like the sad part is, 
pause if applicable. But like yeah, yeah, yeah. some of these dudes be skinny dude. It be dudes that's in shape. Like what are you putting in your body? You 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 offer this many drugs or whatever else to where you can't just naturally go crazy with a woman? I don't get it. Facts, bro. I don't get, I don't get that shit neither, man. I never had a honey pack, I don't plan to. Nah. I'm not, like, I'm, I'm leaving I'm, that shit alone. I've I've uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the power of saying. Like I, I've, I've taken like, so like, Seattle stuff like that, right? I've taken one one time because I was going out of town, and what it does is it doesn't. I don't have a red time, but it, it's like a spontaneous pill. Like you'll be watching the news, and it's like showtime. So like, if I go on like a five, <laughs> and it's just a fun element of me. Like if I go on like a five yeah. seven day vacation or whatever with my wife, like. I might take half of one or whatever, and it just and that's like the game, like it's just sponsor. That's you know it. Saying? You straight for the whole five. It's not a need. It's you know not a need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, I got like, you. I got go- you. I had one in the Ziploc bag forever. The bag was all like it looked all flimsy and shit. More, I was like, oh, next time we go out on vacation, it's like some fun shit. But and it also helps with retention time. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, a know, okay. A lot of people burning themselves out, like all that other stuff. It just you just respawn pretty much in the next. 10 minutes or whatever, or whatever time it normally might, you know what I'm saying, hinder you or whatever, that's evaporated. So that, that it was like a fun element. But like, to have to put it in your drinks all the time, he's making salmon oh with it. And, and nah, man. Putting nah, it, it on chicken. Way. Yeah. The fuck you putting on? Just Popeyes. put honey on chicken. Why yes. are you doing it with homies? I don't get it. Why are they parties I, I with 20 they, dudes? I think they back? really underestimate, bro, when the time you hit about... That 35 to 40 window, then your shit ain't shitting. Then you want to yeah. ask yourself why. It's like, yeah, nigga, because you thought you was invisible. And, you, and it's like, no, bro, you can sustain that, though, by naturally doing naturally, that natural yeah. shit. I think people make it deeper than what it is in turn. I seen a question the other day, and nigga said, uh, he said, yeah, my corners are starting to scam me, bro. Like, what can I do? Like, he was talking about his hair and shit. Yeah. So a dude mapped out this whole shit, but he ended it with, but if it's in... You might have that part of your genes where eventually that shit is just going to go. Yeah. Because what I tell, because I remember uh, somebody asked me, like, yeah, bro, what you do to make your hair long? I said, braid it. Yeah. Consistently. I get oh, my hair braided once a month. That was like, but they always oh. say for your hair to get longer, you just braid it because yeah. it's pulling. It's going to yeah. naturally get longer. And then I just wash it once a month. I don't do none of that deep, you know, da 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 da. Like, even with my skin, like, I've just naturally had good skin. I don't have a skin routine. Yeah. Like, I just drink water. You know, I've been using the same shit I've been using since I was 12, 13 years old. So it's just like, you know, and, you know, I don't intake a lot of, uh, I don't drink a lot of, uh, high syrup type shit yeah, like sugar, soda and shit sugar, like that yeah, yeah. cause you know uh, that can break your skin out too depending on who it is right. but a lot of people they think they can do certain things for a long time and it won't catch up to them Yeah, you see what I'm saying and it's just like no a lot of this shit is just natural shit that you should be doing daily that's it Yeah, ain't nothing too wild and knowing your own body you know what I'm saying? everybody gotta body. know their body you gotta know how your body cause I know how cause I'm gonna tell you what when I first took them, that black seed oil I actually bit into the capsule. Oh, man. That shit tastes nasty yeah, like a motherfucker, yeah, yeah, bro. So yeah, yeah. I don't bite into the shit no more. I just take it like a yeah. retro pill. But it's like, I tell you, because it, it takes a while for that taste to go away. Trust right, me. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, I'm never biting into shit. a black like, seed oil pill again. You never. Said, uh, skin routine. Anybody who's ever like put, like I do aloe. Okay. If you ever got like aloe plant in your mouth, mm-hmm. tastes like battery acid, man. <laughs> like battery acid. Um. Yeah, man. So that shit is yeah. I'm cool on that, bro. I'm cool. I'm cool. So it's it's a lot of shit. Just natural things that you be doing. That just boils down to discipline. Yeah. At the yeah, end of the day, it boils down. To, so uh, Dame Lillard had some uh, oh, shout out to Dame, man. Some some comments <laughs> as regards to uh, you know, the state of the NBA culture today and shit like that. Right. And you know, he's speaking about basically ring culture and how. Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse me. The regular season is discounted. And the end all be all shit and just be about you know you winning a championship. You yeah. see what I'm saying? I see. I, I he's like it's, it'd be post games. People asking about like you know well what about this and like bro like we just had a great we game. Tried, yeah. You see what I'm saying? And I feel like we are starting to really trend more to where people just don't give a fuck about the regular season, no, bro. No, no. Or they pick and choose when the regular because there are some prime matchups that I still look forward to seeing Absolutely. during the regular Absolutely. season, bro. Absolutely. Like I want to see and I don't want that to be discounted because. When somebody gets to the playoffs, they don't win. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know what I started asking? Okay, so every year, y'all tell me about seven niggas who got to win a ring. But it's only one person that's going to walk away. So y'all need to make up y'all mind. If y'all want to hold on to this or pick one player a year who just got to get it done so we yeah. can start having these, these meaningless conversations. Because everybody, it's all about how you go out Yeah, for me. Not to mention, 
be realistic about it. Like, all right, this guy got to win the ring, but let's say Dame first. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Dame it, Dame should get a championship to put an exclamation point on his career. Yeah, but, but you, you know what that's going to mean real quick? You know what that's going to mean? That yeah. means Embiid didn't get it. That means KD didn't get it. Right, right, that right, mean, right. You know what I'm saying? And so you yeah. got to look at that and say, okay, his center is, is a guy who can't play no defense. He got these rookies and these young guys. Shit, these Nurkish don't guys even be playing. Yeah, exactly. He got these guys who've been bouncing. So is the pressure really on him this year? No. And that and that's where I feel like social media played a part because you got so many stand pages and hater muse and all this other stuff. But only one person could win a championship. I do feel like at the end of the day, and I said this too, I think I said on my part, I said this to you. Whenever you look at somebody's career, you're like, yeah, they were great, X, Y, Z. They didn't win a ring, blah, 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 blah. There's always going to be a part of me that says, well, somebody did win a ring that did this. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the pressure on Dame, too, is being the other guy. With Clyde Drexler, I'm pretty sure there was pressure on him because he was a lesser form of Michael Jordan to an extent. Okay, yeah. He led the True. league in steals for like six years in a row at one point. So he swiped the ball. He was Could a score. flashy. Yeah. He was bald. You know what I'm saying? He went to he played on the team that could have taken Michael, Michael Jordan, Jordan. had he not yeah. had Sam Bowie or whatever. So he was that other guy that needed a ring. Dame is a California-born kid. The other guy who plays similar to him is winning, is putting up banners in his hometown, in his area. So yeah, there's pressure on him to been win on the ring. same team. Since been on the same yeah. team. Been on the same team. So there's pressure to win a ring. The regular season matters. It's it's always gonna matter. Do you think? I wanted to, if I if I could interview Dame, I would ask him that. He probably wouldn't be honest about it. Yeah. But I think he does look at what Steph has done in Golden State and want to have a part of that. I yeah. think he does. Oh, of course he Being does. Being that they're kind of similar in play style, and he did it in Golden yeah. State when they was a not even Golden State was so bad they wasn't even a laughing stock. It was just like, bro, that's just Golden State. Yeah. yeah now yeah. they're a household prime time. We need to be seeing TV. It's hard to imagine an NBA go- like like. I think he does look at that and be like, yeah. I can do that in Portland. Exactly. And I, but I don't think he can. No, and, no, 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 no. And, no. The, and that's the difference. Like, it's still California. It's mm-hmm. still the Bay Area. It's still the Bay Area. Yeah. It's still pretty cool. But they was been, a non existent franchise. Right. They're, yeah. they're one of those teams where you see a meme that says, Oh, you a fan of such and such? Name this player and it'd be Azabuki. You know what I'm saying? It's really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's people who don't know about like the Monte Ellis days or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I think he does want a ring. I do also feel like um, it got to be a balance, man. It got to be a balance. You got the, balance. the regular season can't be discounted, man. Mm-hmm. It can't. I'm sorry because that's if that's the case, then just have the playoff. But why is there a playoff? Yeah, you have to have the regular season now, in order to get in there. I'll say this too: don't say that whole regular season got to count thing because all your accomplishments are only there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like if, they're not if all you, there. Yeah. If you if you like known as shit to bed or just be a choke artist in general, don't be like, oh, the regular season can't be discounted strictly because of that. Because yeah, facts. That is and true. That's one thing about Dame that Dame gets the benefit of. Like every elite player, we always remember their worst moment. We never mention that Dame was down 3 to Clay and Draymond with no Steph and no KD. And this is before KD even got there, I think. Or was this the year he got hurt? He hurt his ankle. I can't remember. Oh, I can't even remember that. This, but yeah, there was. I, I do was remember 16, that series. Sixteen. He, this was the I'm it back, was sixteen. The I'm back series when Steph, Steph hurt his did ankle get and, hurt. Yep. Yes, Steph did get because so he got he hurt was, versus Houston. Yeah, you was down 0-3 to them. You had you had to win, man. You should have capitalized on that. But um, and then the Western Conference Finals 2019 yeah. up in every fourth quarter, swept. Mm-hmm. No and KD. He also spoke about not wanting to leave the team. Whatever. I feel like at this point you're the greatest trailblazer ever. Yeah, he is. Right? You know what I'm saying? You the he uh, is. Clyde, like Clyde Drexler Come on, got Clyde? the one no, no, round no, 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 further no. than you. Who cares? You the greatest Blazer ever. Why are you so like? Why are you so loyal to this team? What crazy trade have I don't have nothing? R- you? And here's my thing with Dame because I agree with him on that, but I disagree with him on. Don't make what you do the standard. Yeah, yeah. Like I see what he was doing principle. that sh- this shit with Russ. No, no, no. Don't do that with Russ. Yeah. You trying to do the, the guilt trip about the grass is green on the other side analogy? No, dog. Apple's if you choose orange, to stay man. somewhere, yeah. it's Apple. Exactly. If you choose to stay there, my nigga, you choose to stay there. But don't. It's different now. I didn't like when, when LeBron went to Miami. Yeah, I got over, got over it. it. I didn't like when Katie went to Golden State. I got, got over, over it. it. We're in a new... Nobody is indebted to stay. You're like, you have to adapt or you get left behind. But if you choose to stay, that's cool. But don't try to downplay nobody else shit. And the, and the Russ thing was like, 
say everything. Like the only real flaw about Dame, yeah, Dame is the lack of defense, if anything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He got everything Dame else, man. Was, I argue Dame was the second best point guard in the league, you know, but Russ is a turnover monster. Like he's <sighs> He takes bad shots. There's so many other things. Don't pick him to be like, oh, he could have, you could leave and lose or whatever. Like, bro, your name has been, there's so many, I won't say so many, but there's a handful of teams that you can plug in and so little can go wrong with name. I feel like that would be all too, you know? Um, but you put, you put Dame next to Giannis. You put Dame next right. to, put him in Miami. Right. Uh, put him in Boston. Yeah. With Jalen, with Jalen and Tatum, and nobody's saying you got to go somewhere where y'all yeah, Teflon. Yeah, 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 we Teflon. Nigga, yeah, nobody want to see you in a play in every year, and you one of the greatest shooters we ever seen. It's never been like that. That's yeah, why like, I also said when I was having a conversation, I understand the standard. The standard is the standard, mm -hmm. but I do see there do be picking and choosing because a couple years ago, Dane was alleviating those the the, the critique. He was, and yeah. it was like you can't regard some. And I said it about Luca. You can't regard somebody top five and then pick and choose when you want to yeah, because it's never been that way. Like that, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you need to you need to pick a side. You can't have it both ways. And now I think he's starting to see the oh shit, like, yeah, I am gonna be held to this certain and like, bro, that come with it. And That's I get it. it. Is, yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about how you go out for me. So if you go out on a on a on a losing effort, but you ball, cool, I ain't got no beef. Now, nah, if it's on some Devin Booker, Luca, game seven mm. type, losing my 50, that's different. That's different. But I also see that certain people have a ceiling for a certain player, and that be it. But it's like, oh, hold up now. That's a ceiling for them. Y'all revere that. But Devin Booker has already been to a final. Chris Paul has already been to a final. But there's another guy who been to a final, but they never even reached another conference final after that. So what are we doing? So I get it. At a certain point, you do have to get the hardware. But every, you know how many superstars there are in the NBA? How many of them got rings? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to shit on Carl Malone. I'm not going to shit on John Stockton. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to shit on Charles Barkley. That They lost to the man. It happens. Right. right. And two, to the whole Dame, like the super team thing, because he always talks about that. Times are different, bro. Yeah, times are different. That's why, I like, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah, like you, like all oh, these other. T I wish I had these guys. Then go get them. Go get them. Yeah. Go get them. People talk about. I think niggas could want to play with Dane. That'd be yeah, my thing. Dane it's not even like so a much cool a Portland. Dude. It's not even so much a Portland thing. Yeah. I think, bro, you are a great enough player for a nigga to be like, yeah, bro, I'll run this shit up with you. Right. And also, you, you not the guy who let. All right, Kevin Durant was in the finals. He had an elite teammate, X Y Z. He was the man in his city. He left, sure, criticize him. But, bro, there's not – you don't have – C.J. McCollum, when he was with you, he was pretty good, but mm -hmm. he wasn't, like, nobody's favorite shooting guard. He wasn't in, in these conversations or whatever. No. Go get you to help the, to stack up against him. You just – you want to you wanna do it your own way, and that's cool, but that's just what it is. Like, no complaints. We don't want to hear nothing from you. Mm -mm. Go put yourself in a better position. This should be so funny because it all revolves back to KD when we yeah. had these conversations. And I get it. He took the scale with his move, but – it really did start with the Miami move. And I Miami. think when it, the Miami move started, it let the door open for anything at that point. Yeah. Anything. Because at that point, that was just like unbelievable. I can't believe he did this. And that, you know why I get so mad when people people say, oh, the league was fine and Kevin Durant ruined it. They said this when he went to Brooklyn mm. or whatever. People get mad at Kevin Durant because he actually does something. Meanwhile, LeBron name will be in the mix of something. It'll just fall apart. Yeah, LeBron name has been the mix of acquiring a Bradley Beal or or Dame has said LeBron come get me the whole PG. Kyrie thing. PG you PG so many when Kawhi was supposed when people thought Ka Kawhi was, it was going supposed to be Kawhi Lakers, Bron and AD nobody was mad about it. No nobody said oh here they go ruining the league again. You are right because I remember that 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 was that infamous Laker fan page that was going oh yeah Kawhi is here it's done nobody and da -da -da. was upset about it nobody yeah. but because the other guy that is stopping what you want to be a Goat securing run of winning championships that what he did now now it's a problem. It's how it is, and, and not to mention they're not going to Harrison Barnes had to leave for Kevin Durant to go there. He was a key piece. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For for what could have been, you know, what the Nets traded to get James Harden. You know, Karis. Yeah, Jared Allen. Do you know yeah. what? Have y'all seen the pieces. graphics of the Paul George SGA trade? Like bunch of first round picks, bunch of first round picks. You know, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is what it is at this it point, man. Is, like, man. I'm ready for the playoffs to start. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the Phoenix Suns 
I definitely want to see that. I think this is the year of everybody, please, please stay healthy. Please stay We healthy. can see some great fucking playoff sure. matchups, bro. Because like, the Clippers are... Because we've been due for the Clipper-Laker matchup. But yeah. that... That's that shit probably looking like a sale because we supposed to get that before even Russ got there. Yeah, what's we the, supposed to get that. The Lakers eleven seed now. Eleven now they might be thirteen. It was because uh, the Jazz actually beat Boston last night. They came back and won oh, that they game. Eleven. They eleventh. Okay, yeah. so yeah, so I don't know, man. We'll see. Everybody was looking forward to the Lakers Clippers Western Conference Finals twenty nineteen yeah. when that shit went down, and now we're coming up on four years since that happened, bro. So it's like time flies, man. Yes, time flies. Yes, time flies. So. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Um, I think we're in for a great playoff on both sides of the mm-hmm. bracket. Uh, as much as people shitting on the West this year, I think we'll have some great matchups. Yeah. Uh, the East has some great matchups. Um, 76ers, are, I feel like, I don't know. It would be cool to see them go to a finals, but at least get there. Too much them niggas them. ain't been to a conference final since yeah. 01. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's too much it's tough going sledding. on with that conference, though. Yeah, you know, they're a two seed now, actually. Yeah, I can see the I can see the Cavs like upsetting somebody. I can see that. Because that front line is crazy. One of the most dangerous things that, to me in the NBA, like when you look at a lot of battles over the years, even if they, some of them were forced, like the Pacers and the Heat or whatever, some people think it was those players elevating. Darius Garland, Evan, well, Darius Garland is who he is, but like Evan Mobley coming into his own. Yes. Now. You know what I'm saying? Karis Levert's coming back. Yes, Karis Levert has been balling. Donovan yes. Mitchell is, is 71 point game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's, he's stepping it up. So it's, they're a dangerous team. The 76ers got pieces too. It just feels like. It's all on them, the bro. Harden, Harden got to, gotta, he got to be that guy, I think. Too. And I think he kind of got a little nagging, little left foot injury. Yeah. I don't think it's nothing serious. But uh, they, you know, they kind of just, you know, monitoring that. But he has been playing very good yeah, this year. Yeah. Very, and the explosiveness is still there. Yeah. And I think a lot of people like kind of chuck them to the side because when they saw the jersey change, they automatically say pass. I don't think James is past his prime. Honestly, mm-hmm. I don't like. I think the hamstring injury slowed you can't him call up. Call a man past their prime to switch primary positions and be elite at that. Yeah, like he's still he's, he's still, still leading the league in assists while giving you twenty assists. plus a game, bro. A lot of people can't do that. No. A lot of people are not doing that. They're not. A lot of people aren't giving you twenty plus even and leading you in even assists. Even from a discipline standpoint, like he's not. He has to say, you know what? I'm gonna go back to shooting twenty times a game. I'm still. He'll do that sporadically, but nah, he's he. He's the true point guard now. Yeah, like he's he's definitely been balling. He's been getting by guys, uh, shooting nine from three. Yes, shooting the three has been very good this year, bro. And you just see the different. He has the same pop that he had when he first got to New Jersey. Right. I mean, when he first got to Brooklyn. So it's like you know they they just all got to put it together. I still yeah. think Boston comes out the East. Me too. I don't think the Bucks are coming out the East. Um, and then the West is a toss up, honestly. Yeah. I feel it's a toss up. I, I got the Clippers I can see though. The, I can see the Clippers in the based on the seat, and I can see them in the finals or, or having a battle. Them in the Suns. Yeah. But if the they get that finals. first round matchup, that'd be crazy. Playoff Kawhi. Kawhi. I still, I still, I I still believe I in like Kawhi. With if, but I believe in Kawhi, man. Kawhi would have taken the Clippers to the finals that year. He got. He got. Oh, the twenty one season. That was yeah. That was, PG um, had to fend for himself. That was gonna be the Clippers and the Bucks, and he was. You think he would have got Giannis. Giannis? That Giannis yeah. is his son. He came back from 02. <laughs> he did. With a limp. He did. With a limp. He did. I remember that. That was took, a great series. Took out, took out the Warriors. Even Because I don't see people. the Clippers getting up 2-0 and losing four straight like the Suns no, did. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't see that. No. But, um, yeah, man. So, uh, John Morant had his sit down with Jalen Rose. Uh, I watched that interview in full. Um, honestly, I was actually... I was okay with it. I did see some people have an issue with Jalen Rose asking the question about the gun. At first, when I heard the question, I didn't think nothing of it. I could see why people may have a question about it because they felt like it was like some. But I didn't get no interrogation vibes. That's why. We, yeah, I didn't we, have no we interrogation not vibes. Supposed with to that. ask that to nobody else. Yeah, I didn't see an issue with the question though. No, 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 no. And I and I feel like Jalen Rose worked for a company. He had to ask that question. I think. I don't know. It was weird. You I mean, thought it was weird. I didn't think it was whose weird. gun was it? It's it 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 is an uncomfortable question, but I think it came off wrong because it was Jalen Rose's. Like if Scott Van Pelt had said it, it was you like, expect eh, that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. to hear Jalen Rose from Detroit, who big I, meat saying it just sounded, it I sounded think, a little more different. I think Jock just kind of dismissed it. And, yeah. It oh, was, he definitely yeah, did. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, as he should. Yeah. But <laughs> this ain't fucking Vlad, nigga. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? But well, you know what? When you say this ain't Vlad, Vlad be interviewing a lot of guys in the street, all other stuff. It is more of a fair question because Josh shouldn't be in a situation where he can't say that. That's true. That's why I feel like it was Josh's a basketball player. Yeah. 
Yeah. If this was if this was Luca, some nobody would have a problem asking Luca, but it's two black people that Jordan has a, a point. Yeah. We look at a certain Jordan way, has a point because he should even because even when he gets asked that question, that plays it to his actions for next time. Well, I remember when when I did this interview, they asked me this. So let me not even put myself in this position to even get asked by this question because who's to say it might not be somebody black across from me? Yeah. It might be somebody white. Yeah. And you not know they're gonna ask it. They might ask me in a worse type of form. Mm-hmm. You see know what I'm saying? But overall, what I got from the interview was some good shit. No, it was good. I do feel like Ja was honest mm-hmm. in his uh, how can I say uh. Wanted to do better going forward. Facts. I, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like he... Now, the whole... The question is for... Of course, because that's how Will you give up. But I can honestly feel like he is remorseful, but the actions have to match. That's yeah. all I have to say as regards to that. And you're also a wild boy for having your shirt off. Like, why are you naked in the club, bro? Yeah, right. Like, that's madness. But yeah. that's neither here or there. I think it, it was a very sincere, you know, um, apology mm-hmm. and, like, a good interview. My only gripe was that... You know, like it was very a police ass question, yeah. but I know you gotta ask those yeah. questions. And I feel like that's that's probably a question for Jalen Rose to do that interview. Who he probably do more fun interviews or whatever. Yeah. He may be trying to go in a different way in his well, career see, where he has to be the guy to ask that tough well, question. You know, because I think he made it a big point when the shit took place of relating it to himself of right, his right, previous right, right. wrongs. You see what I'm saying? So I guess there was like you're the perfect Negro for it. You know what I'm saying? They didn't pick Stephen A. Smith. Didn't you get caught in the crack house? Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. you're the perfect Negro for yeah, this yeah. job. So, you know, I, I see why they did it. I see the play there. But it still was one of those things. Like, eh, buddy, that's a that's a, a wild question to ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? But whatever. The nigga kind of was like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> like you wanted to say, nigga, you're not going to answer that. All right. <laughs> like, but he... he that's that's asking the tough question. That's great for Jalen Rose and Ja and to dismiss it. He in the may way have that known the did. questions before an interview. I don't know. He may yeah. have. You know, because you know, it, you when it comes to interviews, a lot of people oh, written out. who get in interviews, they want to know the questions beforehand. beforehand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there is a lot of heavy editing and certain. And this that's another thing I wanted to actually look because I remember when me and you was having a conversation about and the interviews ten minutes, mm-hmm. and that's normally how most interviews go. Like even Taylor Rooks interview with. Uh, Giannis, mm. it was four minutes. Mm. Still a great interview. You see what I'm saying? I wanted to look to see if there was it was heavy produced. Yeah. Did it look like anything was left out? Did it look like it was some like editing? Because got Yeah, because my whole thing is when it comes to interviews like that, I want it to be authentic as possible Facts. because I remember Joe Budden had a little issue with, uh, with Drake's interview with Rat Radar a few years ago that it was produced by him. At the time, I didn't get why he had an issue like, with it. Yeah, I, but I, when I, I look back it. at the actual episode and I'm I'm listening to Joe's point, he was like, "Because for me, I still got a great interview. I enjoyed the interview. But it does if you see produced by the said person as interview, I'm like, oh, he it didn't takes away certain, from certain the things. authenticity yeah. of I wanted to be. And it was like, well, my point was, well, you know, I don't want it because Joe was like, I don't want to do the interview if it's heavily produced. And he's like, well, you won't get the interview. It was like. I don't have a problem with it, but what are you taking out? Yeah. Don't butcher my interview up, bro. You see what I'm saying? But it didn't look like Jalen and Ja had anything that looked like it was like heavily butchered. No, it didn't look no. like that, no. I just hope, like you said, I hope. I want him to be better. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. some of the stories that that was like that whole Ja Morant discourse was uncomfortable because it was it was a lot of I feel keeping it too real or keeping yes. it real goes wrong or pains going on. Like you, there's see nothing wrong with structure, him. bro. Yeah. Yeah. If people would defend him, and I get it. Let's not like he didn't kill anyone. He didn't no, he it. didn't. He but didn't. when you read these stories, I'm not defending nobody for like the the latest one that came out. He supposedly him and his dad impressed somebody who called his sister a bitch at his game. Like his daughter was there. They said a guy reached like gripped his waist like he was gonna grab a gun. Like these are uncomfortable stories. I don't mm-hmm. want to believe it's true. You know what I'm saying? But you can't be in these scenarios. You can't be. It's it's a different time. And you you're know? in a different position. You're not the yeah. average citizen. And again, you're in Memphis. That's not your city. That's not your city. You play you play good basketball there. Yeah. They I'm sh- you ain't won no championship. I'm pretty sure they would extort you out there. I'm yeah. pretty sure it can go left. Like that's that's just one of them cities you don't want to play around with. You don't want to play around in Memphis. No. Hell no. So, yeah, I hope he's sincere in it. I hope and I hope his dad too is a. Uh, is waking up because that's one of the biggest problems. People say, oh, could your dad control you at that age? Well, my dad wouldn't have been beside me doing the same bullshit. Right. That's another thing. 
Facts. His dad in the mix with him. His dad has been in these videos with him. You know, his dad is is like like Cameron said, having Usher look like contests and shit like that. Yeah, you know. So I hope I hope both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope both of them learn and and uh, wising up. And Jai has a, has a good career. You know. Because he's a great basketball player. Yeah, just leave the shit alone, man. Leave, leave the, the alone, leave yeah. the goofy shit alone. But also, that club is wild for releasing that fucking. Yeah, like that man. You see like, how he flooded the, the floor? He, I would even yeah. have come back. Like, he, come he on, He created bro. generational wealth in there. Yeah. Y'all gonna leak them photos? For real, bro. Yo, somebody scam me, bro. Yeah. Like I ain't throw that money. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not my yeah. money. I'll and even if he money. did, yeah. there's no problem with that. Yeah. He's a paying customer. There's nothing wrong with what he's doing in in the in the video. But the thing is just wild. To leak it now, you just lost business. Yeah, exactly. He might not come back and fuck with you. Cause I mean, you 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 released the photo of the chick on his lap. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That's, Another yeah. athlete gonna look at it. Oh no, I can't fuck with you, bro. Yeah. You you be releasing shit. Exactly. Nah. Nah, I can't spit it down me. Right now. You know See, like that's the thing. Like I've never been a strip strip club goer like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But when I when I've gone, like I I went to this one place in Miami. It is very upscale. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember these white people took a group of just a, like their section, and security ran up on a nigga like delete the photo right now. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. like. You no no, no cameras, don't play that. like yeah. I've and that's that was a you know a point for me to be like okay, no flash photography and even even back in the days, bro, it was no camera phones, no no recording the girls. So like, how is this being exposed mm-hmm. inside your strip club? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a stripper there. I don't want nobody to know she's a stripper. This is clearly a VIP section. Section. Yeah. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So why are y'all releasing this shit? It's wild to me. Like, if it's no flash photography, how is this photo out? Mm-hmm. Facts. Agree. No. Yeah, 100%, man. And so. I, I doubt, you know, see, Ja doesn't look, I mean, I'm sure he goes to, like, some crazy clubs, like, but I don't think he's going to the rinky-dink hole-in-the-walls yeah, nah, strip nah, club. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. this is some type of standard of, of women are in this, right, this right. strip club. We've yeah. seen some horrible strip clubs here in Charleston, so you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's not in those shit. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That's crazy. All in all, though, I just want to see him be better. That's it. Absolutely. He Absolutely. has a great. He has a lot of years left in him. A lot. And Prime years too, and he has a lot more. Not only success to be had, mm-hmm. money wise, accomplishment wise in the mm-hmm. NBA, like setting your family up. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck it up. Man. Yeah. Don't. And I and I hope too. Like I always say, we need to bring back shame. You know what I'm saying? We do. It, it, we do. It, it was. It was. It did it feel do. refreshing a little bit to see people shame him how he shamed him. I feel like Ja. Now you gotta you gotta be the young big homie. Ja, what 23, 24? 23. He'll be twenty four. He this gotta year. Be, like it shouldn't be some old head who was doing what he was doing 20, 30, 40 years ago or whatever on ESPN or TNT saying you don't need Ja at this point should be like, you know what? That was stupid of me. So next year, I'm gonna tell uh Scoot Henderson and, and Victor yeah. not to do this, or you know, when it's Brownie's time or whatever, because there's nothing wrong so, with passing down that yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, there's no nothing wrong with passing that knowledge down, you know? Yeah, but I just wish him the best, man. Facts. So, how you feel about your boys in all season so far, man? Blue Cowboys. Yeah, man. Ain't no other boys, is it? <laughs> Ain't no other team as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> that shit number one. Of you uh, put above everybody, hey, man. <laughs> Let me tell you, niggas just got Brandon Cooks. Outside of this, all, and work clothes, all my clothes are Cowboys apparel. All of it. Drew, this nigga be sending me pictures when he orders some new cowboy shit. Yeah. Nigga don't play. He don't it's, play. It's the whole <laughs> shit. My wife just got a CD Lamb shirt the other day. Like, yeah. we a unit. You know what I'm saying? See, I used to be heavy on the gear. I mean, yeah. I still got it. Just hanging. Yeah. You know I used to be saying? heavy on the gear, too. Like, like, not like, so much. But see, I'm like, it's it's slick. It's cool shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, I order from um certain sites where it's not like just generic, whatever. But yeah. it'll be a shirt like, like I got a, a Tony Pollard and say something across it. Just something regular. But I'd never yeah. be like... Cowboys pants, blue navy sneakers, the hat on, the the five championship jacket. Yeah. I'll throw some sweats in the t shirt. Yeah, you're not doing the cowboy Jordans. That yeah, just, yeah, it's no, not no, Jordans. No, 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 <laughs> just have that. the stars and shit. On I it. did have some cowboy slides the homie okay. bought me because they was on clean, but they were still Nike. Yeah, yeah, yeah they slides. Yeah, 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 they slides. And they slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know yeah. what I'm saying? But I would rock some Panther slides. Yeah, yeah. But they have some 13s that just have the Dallas. That's wild. That's wild. Come on now. But niggas are like that. Yeah, I wear some. Now, I'm not going to lie. This year, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get some jorts. I'm going to get some Flint 13s. Okay. I'm going to get some, you know. Oh, the some, Flint 13s. Uh, yeah. Zoom at. That a, is y'all color. I'm going I'm to do the. The, the, the Mexican. The t- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to do the San Antonio Mexican fit. I'm going to Jerry World this year. I'm going. I already know who we that playing. Is their, that is their fit, bro. You I seen that yeah, on Twitter one yeah, time. Yeah. I did see that. That's it. That is their just, fit. Just like bro, the 49ers crazy. got it with the uh, 49ers be wearing like the bread sometimes. But yeah, that's that's oh, I'm gonna pull it off. But I'm, so far, I mean, we had to get rid of Zeke. Zeke, uh, 
I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, go ahead, speak on that. Zeke is uh, he's still only twenty seven years old. Yeah, That's a crazy yeah, yeah. thing. And he's still productive. Double digit touchdowns the last two years, like eight, nine hundred yards. He's still productive. He but just you're not. I look. I, if I'm not mistaken, Zeke by the end of his contract would have been the second highest paid running back in NFL history behind AP. Uh, it started actually a year and a half ago with Tony Pollard being the guy over Zeke. Yeah, and that's yeah, not supposed yeah, to be yeah, a thing. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah. And, and they were holding on to And that's the downside of being a Cowboys fan besides like 40 other things is that Jerry Jones treats the team so much like a family that... Yes. He'll hold on to something. Yeah, well, he'll hold on to something. Why, why did we promote... Uh, a I think he got that from Jay Richardson. Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it just... He had to go, um, have some good years on him, have some good memories. I got his jersey. I'm going to keep it. You know what I'm saying? Um, but Tony Pollard I can tell this last year was very player. frustrating for y'all. And yeah, yeah. It yeah, was. Yeah. Y'all was kind of fed up with him. Yeah. I, I'm fortunate enough to, to got a, a recording of his touchdown in the Jacksonville game. Um, but Tony Pollard is – Tony Pollard is, is – he, he made it known that he's the Yeah, he's the one. Yeah, he made it known. He made it known. He's the guy. He's, he's what Zeke should have been. He, he hits the whole hard. Run game, pass game. Like, Come he on, can't man. block the best, but that can improve. That can improve. Or the whole line needs to step forward. the fuck up. Exactly. exactly. Everything exactly. else Tony yeah. does. Yeah. Ain't yeah. fast so, as fuck. Fast as fuck. Uh, we got Brandon Cooks, so I was waiting for y'all to pull up for a fifth and a sixth round pick, which I mm-hmm. think we wanted to get during the trade deadline. And okay. I'm trying to think, like, how would that have really affected the season? And it might have, I mean, yeah. might have put up a couple more yards or points against San Francisco, but I'm, I'm a – I'm the contract. I'm a realist Cowboy yeah. fan. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I mean, I but, think I think your defense got better with us trading Gilly to y'all, which is yeah. still fucking dumb. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but I already from the post interview, like I was I was with um, my homegirl Nilani when we was watching them because she's a coach fan too, and we were watching the post interview and Gilly was giving like nigga he ain't coming back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. I and I kept saying this shit because just questions are like questions are like. Uh, Answered in a certain way, you know. When when a team, when you know a person's going to be, it's so funny now. Like even watching the Eagles players, yeah. Like dudes online, like C D Garner Johnson is like reacting to photoshops of him in Bengals jerseys now, yeah. and all this stuff. Like it's free agency is so open, yeah. And so once upon a time it was like a blockbuster announcement, somebody. Nice. But now, like you say, you'll watch a season cap interview, and it's like, oh yeah, he's not coming back. Not back. Or like as soon as. They'll trade him for, like Shannon Sharp said, a, a box of Cracker Jackson, a bag of marbles. Yeah, I like to man. get him out. You know what I'm saying? So, I like our defense. I feel like our run defense needs to get better. Like, our run defense is a problem. Like, yeah. we need a great interior lineman or – I heard they And at least one Bobby linebacker Wagner. who can get to the – Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who can I fill them holes. talking about Bobby Wagner. But other than that, um, Dak this past year was – Dak was he – was, he, was, he was throwing the ball to anybody in the yeah. arena. Yeah, our jersey, other jersey, he didn't care. Yeah, facts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you I, still I, believe in him, though. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I feel like it was a bad season. And in the beginning, this is what I was like, you know what? He hadn't played so many games. He's a little rusty or whatever. But I think, and this is where narratives is an issue. We'll call a guy dink and dunk Dak or check down Kirk Cousins or whatever. We'll make fun of them for embracing their game. But. When they want it, we, we say, oh, you got to throw the ball more. When they do that and they're not the best at it, well, mm-hmm. you kind of put that pressure on them in a way. Mm-hmm. Yes. We, Dak you, don't got to make every You throw. told Kevin yeah. Durant his rings in, in, in Golden State don't matter, but now he's falling out with Kyrie and his, I don't know why you left. Nigga, you told me I should have left. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Y'all told gotta, me for years get, to get away from Russ. Yeah, That's what y'all you, told me. You yeah. got to embrace your game. Um, He still can throw it deep. I do feel like Dak kind of does get a bad rap, like – you could say he's overrated. You could say he's whatever he is. But at the end of the day, his best game ever was against the Belichick defense. Very true. You know what I'm saying? He has thrown mm-hmm. a deep. He did retire Tom Brady. Very you know true. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So Dak is a pretty good quarterback. I believe in him. Yeah. Um, you, he's not the game manager guy. That people, I don't think he's a game manager yeah, he's either. Not a, he's I not think, a, and like I said, I think he is capable of being in the elite. He right. just he teeters that line too yeah, much. Yeah. yeah. And and I would rather him. I would I would love to win the playoff game with him throwing the ball a total of total of 100 air yards rather than him slinging it and we lose you know what i'm saying so i believe in that we yeah. can get it done we just it just has to be everything has to be has to be right and i don't think that's wrong to say yeah patrick mahomes the only guy of like the last x amount of years that has won with a shitty defense yeah tom brady mm-hmm. took less money so his defense can look like the AFC pro bowl roster mm-hmm. for most years yeah. and we've had we spoke about anthony brown our cornerback I mean, he couldn't he couldn't cover a news story. It's, with it's a definitely it's, it's, it's definitely 
doable. Yeah, yeah, it's doable. You don't need a lights out defense to win a Super Bowl, no. no. Because if they fear that quarterback, you're always in contention. That's and you know because you ain't got to say it. You can yeah. tell by looking at yeah. the game. Like yeah, yeah. I fear this on this team. This is what I fear on this team. Yeah. I don't fear this on this team. And but if you fear that quarterback, you will always be in contention. Yeah. But always. Brandon Cooks is a great actor. Brandon Cooks is like the most underrated receiver of this generation. Like if you look at his stats, he's yeah, he's, he's just been he's just been yards. in Houston. He's just been yeah. constantly be getting traded. Then when he was in um, when that that year when he was in um LA? LA? Yeah. Great year. Yeah. Him in golf. He's, he's yeah. always been good. He was um they had to trade him to give like Michael Thomas the spot in, in New Orleans. And then he yes, he I remember around, he went so. to he went to New England yeah. and then he went to yeah. Rams. He's and been then he was on like two Houston. Super Bowl losing teams that ended up winning not too soon after. Yeah, whatever. but the, I feel like our run defense was worse last year because when you can't when anybody could run the ball against you, that's 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 everything. Because if your pass defense is, is shitty, they're still not going to sling it with a with a shitty quarterback. But if your run defense is horrible. They will There's no the pressure on them to throw with a two hundred eighty exactly. fullback. You know what I'm saying? That's what I so, can't. I can. I can tolerate a bad pass defense to a degree. Oh, I'd be raging with a bad rush. Defense. But I cannot. I cannot tolerate a bad rush defense because that yeah. means they just do whatever the fuck they yeah, want to do. Yeah. It's no and pressure it, on the quarterback just, to throw the ball. It's man on man. Like it's, if if you if you, if they average in eight yards of carry and they run in between the <coughs> excuse me between the guards. Why like, does a quarterback on, need dog. to throw more than twenty times that game period? You know what if I'm they saying? doing that. So yeah, but I like our moves. Okay, I'm, I'm okay, ready okay. for the season. I'm ready to go to Jerry. I'm ready to go to uh, AT and T um, in uh, Ak Ash because okay. we got Charlotte on the schedule. Yeah, y'all be in the bank this year. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm, I'm gonna definitely try to make an effort to be be there for that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that game always going. sells out in Charlotte. It always does. I'm gonna go to what's that Red Eye Diner in Charlotte? Yeah, before the game. Oh, for I sure. take yeah. That's so slap. They they got this chicken biscuit that is so amazing. So buzzing. It's it's like. Oh man, a great place. But son, it's funny because y'all get flack for y'all arena not having the most fans or whatever. But like, if you, I've been to Char- Charlotte's a city I love too. Mm-hmm. I've been to Charlotte multiple times during football season, and it's blued out. Like it's now we be in this gear everywhere. Now this y'all the last outside. couple years it's kind of been like you know, mm-hmm. but there is a genuine love for that football team. And no, we're not the Kansas City Chiefs. We're not the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. But. You know, people don't got to worry about coming to Carolina and be like, oh, I got to worry about these, like, Philly fans. And yeah. Like, it's not that. Yeah, no, like, no, no. we support our team, but mm-hmm. we ain't reckless, bro. Yeah, yeah, And I think we get a stigma test that's like, oh, like, quote, unquote, soft. But yeah. it ain't that. Like, it's we just, do love the team. Yeah. Because. Like, you're not going to fight nobody or blow snot on nobody. Cause what I do believe, though, we don't tolerate mediocrity. Mm-hmm. Yes, through our tenure, we have been mediocre. But the fan base don't tolerate. That's why we've had these different coaches. Yeah. Because they listen to the. Trust me. Absolutely. Yeah. They they hear yeah. they hear the whispers. We don't tolerate that bullshit. And, that, and that's the thing. Y'all may, y'all one of those teams where like 98% of y'all fan base is local. So they they yeah. have to hear it. You know what I'm saying? They, they gotta hear that they shit. Gotta, yeah. They gotta know. But um, yeah, I, I love Charlotte. Uh y'all fan base is funny. Cause <laughs> especially the last couple of years, you know. But things are gonna change. Y'all get the second best quarterback in the draft this year, you know? It's gonna be mm. a real good season for y'all. Yeah, man, I, I'm definitely looking forward to the CJ of Bryce Young era, man. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. Um, Anthony Richardson too, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for trolling purposes, I know you're ready. Hey, hey man, if them niggas draft Anthony Richardson, which I don't believe uh, Frank Reich is gonna do that, probably. I think he'll be a Colt. But um, I don't, I don't know. But if they do do that, yeah, I'm I'm yeah. I'm I'm going off the grid. I'm letting y'all know that yeah, right now. I'm going off the grid. Done. I ain't got nothing to say. What what what, what can I say? What can I say? I think he's gonna be good, man. Okay, <laughs> you would say that. <laughs> this nigga Mike was talking shit for months. It's, it's, it's Bryce, CJ, AR right around here. Now anybody but Levis, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I can't anybody do the Levis shit. Levis, he, can't do the Levis shit, man. I'm oh. sorry, but yeah, man, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, uh, I probably will be taking off that day. Because we do have the first overall pick, so I need mm-hmm. to see that live in action. Um, so yeah, man, I, I'm just ready, man. So you know, I appreciate you coming through. Hey, man, it's the always one. welcome. Um, you got any shout outs, man? Fuck these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe to PSBS. Yes, on YouTube. Tag Parlay your shit, man. Bullshit, man. Plug your shit. Plug uh, your shit. Follow me at Get Money J O R D on Twitter. Other than that, nah. Shout out to the Cowboys. Shout out to Dak. Shout out to CD. I called CD season last year. I told Mike. I said he CD. did. He did. I said. I said it like was damn near right on, but it yeah. was it's within one or like, two of please. each stat. Yeah, I think he was. had like two less touchdowns than I predicted. Yeah. Um, had more catches, but 
but it was all in the area. Yeah, you appreciate you y'all for it. having me. Shout out to Mo. You know what I'm saying? Always. Yeah. Shout man. out to Mo. Shout out to Drew. Shout out to Mike. I respect, respect. Yeah, man. Shout out to the city as usual. Everybody doing their thing. Shout out to all the sus- uh, subscribers, supporters, followers, everybody, man. Follow us, subscribe us, share, you know, all the normal shit, man. If you fuck with us, you know, tell people about us. Yeah, you know, man. always, man. Be safe out here, man. Always sure. be safe. Be safe, be smart. Yeah, man. Let it fight another day. Stop celebrating these damn stupid ass holidays, too. Yeah. Damn St. <laughs> Patty's Day, goofy <laughs> ass shit. Fucking... Just get drunk if that's you want. Yeah, man. That's, that's so, so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but big up, big, big up. up <laughs> so, like we say every week, man, you ain't thinking this show that gets you in your feelings. You feel some type of way. Always remember, we just, just the messages. messages. We out. <laughs>